The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Today is Wednesday, October 6, 2021. What does it say about America that the progress of so many people, particularly black people, and the voting rights, particularly of black people, are being held up by a relic called the filibuster and by the personal development of something analogous to what I believe Kirsten Cinema believes is a romantic comedy? This is what we're dealing with. Let's unpack this today. We begin with On the Clock with Georgia Ford. This morning, we take a look. More than 150,000 gallons of oil has spilled into the Pacific Ocean. A company who owns the pipeline has been cited more than 100 times in the last 10 years. And so many people are wondering why there wasn't more intervention from the government for a corporation that clearly has not been operating uh, within the guidelines, the federal guidelines. And now 150,000 gallons of oil in the Pacific Ocean is not only threatening the wildlife that lives in the ocean, but potentially could cause harm to the people who live in California. I want to turn now to the latest coverage on this oil spill. I do believe we have uh, the latest coverage from oil spill off the Southern California coast was described as an environmental catastrophe by the mayor of Huntington Beach on Sunday as the breach of an oil rig pipeline left dead fish and birds strewn on the sand and offshore wetlands clogged with oil. The spill was caused by a breach connected to the Ellie oil rig and stretched from the Huntington Beach Pier down to Newport Beach, a stretch of coast popular with surfers and sunbathers. The oil rig was operated by Beta Offshore, a California subsidiary of Houston-based Amplify Energy Corporation. One of the largest oil spills in the state's recent history, killing fish and birds and threatening local wetlands. Now, residents, business owners, and environmentalists are questioning whether authorities reacted quickly enough to contain it. A pipeline breach about five miles off the coast of Huntington Beach in Orange County sent approximately 126,000 gallons of oil into the Pacific Ocean, creating a slick that spanned about 8,320 acres, larger than the size of Santa Monica, infiltrated Talbert Marsh, a reserve home to dozens of species of birds. People who live and work in the area said they noticed an oil sheen and a heavy petroleum smell Friday evening. It wasn't until Saturday afternoon that the Coast Guard said an oil slick had been spotted and a unified command established to respond. And it took until Saturday night for the company that operates the pipeline believed responsible for the leak to shut down operations. Now, Ben, this reminds me of the tragic BP spill that happened several years ago. But the thing it brings up for me most is the the protesting that's been happening around line three. I mean, when you see oil spills like this or the one that happened with BP, how is it that it, it, it how is it that we're still allowing these pipelines to be constructed under our our water sources? Profit, money, greed, um, and the intentional dragging of the feet of the energy sector to transition to something that is sustainable. Uh, they understand the science. They understand the research. They understand what they're doing. Um, but it doesn't stop them from continuing to do it because they have to hit those quarterly profit margins and the environment be damned. And it's sad because I feel like being here in Minnesota where Enbridge is constructing line three, I've met so many water protectors and a lot of them are indigenous men and women who talk about the fact that our bodies are made up of about 80 percent water and each and every one of us needs water to live. Mm. And so how can we in our right mind just as a people, mm. allow these corporations to continue doing this. I mean, it, it feels as though 
uh, there should be some intervention. I, I don't know how many more gallons of oil need to spill in the ocean before the government intervenes and starts to outlaw this. It's the it's the political games. We've mastered the art of stopping any and all progress with politics. Politics are not here to help us. The politics of our system are here to grind everything to a halt. And so they have perfectly um, protected themselves from actually having to change and to address these environmental issues because they throw it into the hands of the politicians in Washington. And they have a uncanny knack of making a spectacle of all of this such that we don't get anything done. We know the science, we know the research, we see the impact, but because of our politicians and the games that they play in the Kabuki theater in in Washington, D.C., we don't get anything done. You know, the other layer to this is oftentimes the construction of these pipelines violates treaty rights. We saw that with the no dapple, the North Dakota Access Pipeline. We also have seen that with the Line 3. So on so many levels, uh, the, the construction of these pipelines is not only dangerous for all humankind, it violates treaty rights. And yet and still these corporations who in this case amplify energy was in violation of so many codes. They had uh, 10 diff- or 100 different violations in 11 years. A hundred violations in 11 years. And so, I mean, this to me, if you ask me, it's not borderline criminal. It is criminal. Absolutely. You're endangering people all across this country. You're violating treaty rights and you have all of these violations. Yet and still our government is complicit. Yeah. Yeah. Because what happens when you have more money? than anyone that is regulating you. When you have more influence, political power, than anyone who's going to hold you accountable. Every now and then we get some kind of dog and pony show where they'll get a slap on the wrist, but it's never anything significant, never anything that makes them change their behavior pattern because here we are yet again. And it's increasing. The speed with which the, all of these accidents are happening, um, it's increasing. And that's because they don't The entire conversation about using oil at this point when we are seriously getting to peak, uh, I think, is is destructive and they know what they're doing. But here we are yet again. And I feel like when there is acts of violence or harm against the environment, it usually isn't seen as destructive or criminal as when there are acts of violence against a human being. But Mm. In, in essence, when you really talk to the water protectors, harming, destroying, polluting the water is violence against us because we need it to live. That's right. That's right. And I thought you were going to say the way we treat violence against property, because if you think about it, the, the, way, the way the system erupts if a building burns um, is suggests that they would be upset if the oceans are burning. But they're not. Amazon's burning. They don't care. Oceans are leaking full with oil. They don't care. So their emphasis is on what is selfishly theirs. It's not about the people. It's about how they can gain more in the environment and humanity be damned. And when you said Amazon, you meant the ocean, not the the actual retailer. The uh, the, uh, Amazon. (laughs) Yeah, no, not the store. But see now, see, uh, well, that's a whole different conversation. Now we have to distinguish between the the nature, (laughs) Amazon and the uh, uh, the anathema uh, that is uh, Jeff Bezos. But I digress. You know, and I think that there is something to set up, be said about that accountability or lack thereof. How do we move to a place in our nation where accountability is a part of our culture? I think it is it's necessary for us to restore the morale of, of our country because in, in so many ways, it's been diminished. Not only has there been a lack of accountability with these corporations, but there's also been a lack of accountability in our corrupt criminal justice system. Uh, we've covered extensively a lot of different you know, police killings, uh, fatal encounters that uh, especially black people have had with police in this nation. Uh, but also even further, when you look at how many innocent people are, are in in our jail systems. And so the the threat of accountability, it surfaces through in, in so many uh, different aspects of these conversations. I do 
do want to turn now to accountability uh, with, again, the Minneapolis Police Department, who was caught on body cameras saying that they're hunting down protesters during the George Floyd uprising in, in 2020. And Jaleel Stallings was one of those protesters. He was shot by rubber bullets. He didn't see who shot him. And so he was under the impression that he was being shot by a random civilian, a random resident. And and he ended up firing back. He was charged with about eight different counts um, and he had to go through an extensive legal battle. But eventually, based on the body camera footage of the incident, he he was uh, his charges were dropped because if the police aren't identifying themselves and they're intentionally going after protesters, how are you supposed to know? Uh, that these are actually police and and not some random person attacking you. Hmm. Georgia, there's no way this and, and, you know, it takes so much to get justice in this country. I mean, justice would have been this brother not having to go through this situation in the first place. Justice would have been these Minneapolis police officers not even being on the force with that type of thinking that they're going to hunt down protesters. And this is what happens when you have that kind of barbaric thinking in the ranks of people who are supposed to be here to protect and serve us. But here we are yet again. And if not for the technology um, that at sundry times does help. I'm, I'm, I'm grateful for the technology here, but so many cases, Georgia, that you've covered We've seen that they just conveniently cut the technology off or refuse to release it. So this time it helped out. And some people might be asking, well, what does this have to do with accountability? Yeah, he shouldn't have been charged in the first place. And yes, he was acquitted. So in this case, the the system worked. But to your point, he shouldn't have had to gone through this in the first place. And what do we say for ourselves when there are actually officers on the Minneapolis police force right now who have more complaints filed against them than Chauvin did. Chauvin Mm -hmm. had nearly 20 complaints filed against him and there was no intervention. There was no disciplinary action. He was not held accountable for the first time that someone said he used excessive force and actually survived. Had there been intervention, had there been accountability, George Floyd may still be here. Some of those buildings that people care more about might actually still be here yet. And still it didn't, it didn't work for him. The lack of accountability, this culture that we have, cultivated that has uh, allowed people to move forward in doing the wrong thing without being disciplined, without there being any consequences for their action. And still to this day, people on the MPD uh, don't, they don't have accountability. That's right. And as you were speaking, I didn't know whether or not you were speaking about the Minneapolis Police Department or about the um, the oil pipeline where there has been no accountability. And then what really threw me for a loop were all the complaints against these officers that have been logged. Right. Just like all of the infractions that have been logged against those energy companies that still did what they wanted to do anyway. There is a level of impunity that goes around this country and it particularly intersects with white men, but particularly those who are on the leading edge, either of the police state or greed. But if you have the smallest infraction, you will be held accountable at the highest standard simply because of the color of your skin. That's right. That's right. That's right. And so, I mean, you know, mm. we we continue to remain at this space, I believe, in our country where we are still amidst a, a racial reckoning where America really has to answer for uh, the discrimination that, that is embedded in every industry and in every facet of life, uh, uh, whether it's the criminal justice system, whether it's corporate America, white collar crimes, there is a, a double standard. There, there is this expectation that black citizens uh, be held to this, this high standard. Meanwhile, you have CEOs who can definitely afford to take a loss that are allowed to get away with murder. Absolutely. And I'm, I'm, I'm actually now thinking about the, the smallest amount of accountability that we get. It, it is so far and few and in between. Um, and they are able to get away with 
with murder, but something that resonated with me with what you said, Georgia, profoundly was the amount of and the level of accountability that black people particularly are exposed to in this country. Broken glass policing, um, simple things like playing in, in a park leading to summary execution by the police force. This is the reality of black folks around the country. And yet we have another column of people in this country that are not only able to get away with murdering us, they're able to get away with devastating our economy and they're able to get away with destroying our environment. That's absolutely absurd. Ben, I know that you have also been tracking a story this morning as well. Yeah, so we're keeping an eye on all of the action that has taken place. We talk a lot about the filibuster. We talk a lot about Joe Biden's agenda being held up, particularly by Joe Manchin and Kirsten Sinema. Uh, we have more footage this week from Act TV, our partners over at Act TV, where we encourage you to do more than watch. We want you to act. And these are clips from a protest. This first clip is of former NAACP president Ben Jealous uh, outside of the White House demanding accountability and demanding that we do something on behalf of voting rights. If we can't protect anything else in this country, Georgia, you would think it would be easy at this point to protect the rights of black people. Let's listen to this first clip. Mr. President, Mr. President, tell your party in the Senate to fix the rules so we can get the voting rights bill through. There's nothing sacred about the filibuster. It is an accident of legislative history. It must frequently used to insulate Jim Crow. We have created carve-outs to the filibuster to fix roads and bridges. Joe Biden can call on the Senate to create a carve-out to the filibuster or just get rid of it. This is the biggest attack on American democracy since the rise of Jim Crow. So often we activists, we get arrested in D.C. and, you know, they put the cuffs on, they take the cuffs off. Out. And out. That's not what's going to happen today, most likely. We're being told this is a more serious infraction. We will be processed differently. And we will likely be there overnight. I know them as friends. I've known Kamala for a third of my life. I've known Joe almost as long. We are only risking arrest right now because we need our friend. A. Philip Randolph was told, they say, some say by LBJ, some say by FDR, some say by both. I agree with everything you say, now go make me And this is where we are right now. Saying to the President of the United States, saying to the Vice President of the United States, stand up, have courage, tell the Senate to remove the filibuster as an obstacle and secure our voting rights. Now, Georgia, these protests are taking uh, place all across the country. Uh, and again, that was Ben Jealous, former president of the NAACP, but also now with People for the American Way. That's the organization that organized that particular protest. Um, and I want to play the second clip from Cliff Albright. He is also um, a friend of the show and co-founder of Black Voters Matter. Um, and again, this footage was provided to us by our partners at ACT TV. Listen to listen to the plea. Because we're not asking, we're not asking for reparations here, Georgia. We're not asking even for, I mean, while we are asking for justice reform, we're at the point where we can't even get our votes guaranteed. Listen to Cliff Albright as he explains it. It's so important that we are here to send this message to the president, to the White House, to Congress, that we need them to finish the job. That we don't need any more excuses. We need them to finish the job. Now, the other day on Friday, y'all may have heard, you know, President Biden took a trip down to the Capitol in order to push through this infrastructure bill and reconciliation. And that's important, right? We, we all, we want infrastructure for our communities, right? Yeah. Yeah. But we can't go forward on that at the risk of giving up on the infrastructure of our democracy. We can't have him out there talking about, you know what, it doesn't, he said, it doesn't matter how long it takes, it doesn't matter if it takes six minutes or six days, right? Y'all heard him say that. <laughs> but as long as you got voting rights on hold, then it does matter how long it takes for you to pass infrastructure. We can't be sitting around waiting for you to come to an agreement. Prioritize the infrastructure of our democracy. To prioritize, to move voting rights, to move the Freedom Vote Act up ahead on the calendar. We can't wait 
for infrastructure. We need voting rights now. You can't have it both ways. You can't on the one hand say that voting rights is sacred, but then in the next sentence out your mouth, you're worshiping at the altar of the filibuster. You can't have it both ways. You got to pick a side, President Biden. That's what we're demanding today. Pick a side. Finish the job. End the filibuster. Pass our voting rights. And we need you to do it right now. And I'm here to say that I and these other folks that are standing next to me, we've counted the cost. We've counted the cost on both sides, what the cost is of getting arrested, but also what is the cost if we don't take a stand? What is the cost in terms of, of not having voting rights and not being able to move forward on the issue? Now, one last detail, Georgia, is that normally these arrests are um, in a way symbolic. But this time it was different because of the proximity to the White House and the increased security, uh, particularly because of January 6th. They were actually held overnight and they were told that this is a little bit different than all the other times before because we're in a heightened state of security. Uh, And so we're going to stay in touch with Cliff Albright and everyone who was involved with that um, to make sure that they are okay as they uh, continue to stand and speak truth to power. You know, and we think about accountability who who was held accountable uh, accountable in this situation and for what in this situation you have individuals who are saying we deserve the right to vote our voting rights should be protected standing on the shoulders of John Lewis yet mm-hmm. and still they're they're held accountable at what standard and at what cost right. and so for this you know to juxtapose this with the other two situations that we've discussed this morning. It's interesting because uh, here, you know, what law was really violated? You know, uh, do these people not have the uh, protection under the First Amendment to protest? This looked like a peaceful protest to me. There was no property that was damaged. They weren't Mm -hmm. violent. They weren't even aggressive. They were expressing themselves. And so what what violation did they have? Did they did they violate some code 100 times like the corporation did earlier? Uh, You know, yet and still they're held and I'm going to do air quotes accountable (laughs) for their actions. Right, right. And then also, and Dwayne, I don't know if you have any B-roll of January 6th, but let's be real now. Um, How many how many actual arrests took place on January 6th versus what had to take place later? Right. Look at how far these those protesters were able to get with their outrage and with their what they were fighting for. These folks are Cliff and and the rest. The. And I think I think we uh, may have lost Ben's signal there, but. Mm. Uh, and maybe I think he's uh, coming back in. But, you know, when you when you think about uh, these individuals being arrested after uh, protesting, demanding the rights for voting rights, something that feels like we have backslidden. We made so much progress, uh, you know, 30, 40, 50 years ago. And now it's being unraveled, similar even to to women's rights. And to your point, Ben, of looking at what happened on January Six. The only reason why we saw any accountability for January 6th is because the people held the federal government's feet to the fire and That's demanded right. that there be some arrest. But, yeah, that should have happened on January 6th, the same way these people are out there the day of and no one had to, uh, you know, put up pictures and do investigation to find out who's who and go back to their city and state and find them to press charges like they did on January 6th. They, they could have done the same thing on January 6th. And the other thing, Georgia, um, before my signal cuts out again, I want people to know that there's actions taking place all around the country. There are protests that are happening right now. There are strikes. There are so many union strikes happening all around the country. So these are just just few images of The resistance of people who are fighting back and the resistance did not die just because Donald Trump left. There are so many more things that we have to fight for right now today. You know, when I was in Hawaii, there was protests. We were vacationing and there was individuals there protesting 
protesting the mask mandate. And a lot of them were saying that Biden's not their president, that they still believe that Trump is their president. None of those people were arrested. In fact, I've covered a lot of uh, protests that were in favor of Trump. And I can't recall one time any of those individuals were arrested. Mm. That's because the police normally, uh, their position and their, um, their weapons, their gaze is towards us. Their backs will always turn to the white supremacists. So that lets you know whose side they're on, right? Any of these protests, we have footage of it. There's any case that you see where there's a line between white supremacy and protesters fighting against white supremacy, always take a look at who the police are facing. They're always facing us and never the white supremacists. So, Ben, the question I think so many of us are left with is how how do we change our country? Because it is not equitable for people who look like you or I. And it, it's, you know, it, I mean, we have so many examples that leave us with this conclusion. It's simply just not fair. What What do we have to do as a country in order to see some of these changes come to fruition? Uh, I mean, that's the million dollar question, right? Uh, and that's what uh, black people have been fighting for in particular. Uh, I mean, um, they, we are obviously in league and comrades with um, other marginalized communities, but black folks, we've had to find ways of surviving this system. Um, both the system of white supremacy and the system of greed in, in the form of capitalism. How do we how do we win? I mean, that's the big question, because I think we have to understand those things. Those two devils are inextricably linked. You know, we're, we're not going to beat white supremacy unless we address the underlying greed that has people going out into the pandemic to make quarterly profit margins for billionaires to be able to go into space. I mean, the absurdity of it all, Georgia. So I don't quite know if I have an answer for it yet, but I do believe we have hundreds of years of theory and practice that tells us what the real diagnosis is. And, and what is the alternative? I mean, are, are we mm -hmm. literally supposed to just sit here and twiddle our thumbs while our voting rights are being stripped away from us? You know, there has been the, the legal uh, diplomatic practice of drafting the bill, having it authored, introducing it, mm. having it voted on. We've gone through all of the the proper protocols, yet and still we have a system that is designed to uphold our oppression. And so we're left with no other choice but to stand in front of the White House and demand that uh, something be done. But where is the intervention Where's the intervention by the people who are supposed to represent us? Georgia, um, I'm going to need you to always stay grounded um, and, and be the one who always walks me back from the brink because you asked the really fundamental question, what is next? When we've ex we exhausted all of our other options, right? We voted. We went to the polls in a pandemic. We went back in January and send you uh, uh, John Ossoff and Raphael Warnock from Georgia. We flipped Georgia blue. I mean, come on, black folks, we've done everything that this system has told us to do. We did everything that we were supposed to do in Tulsa. We did everything that we were supposed to do in Rosewood. We did everything we were supposed to in Camilla, Georgia. So, uh, yeah, uh, Sister Georgia, um, next question, please. <laughs> next question. Well, what's coming oh, up God. next? <laughs> what's coming up next? Ah. Uh, Awesome. Listen, we're going to be joined um, by Ahmad Baba. He's from Rant Media. We're going to be speaking with him during Like It or Not, particularly about the technology aspect of everything we're fighting against. We're not just fighting against white supremacy. We're fighting against the algorithm, particularly Facebook. There's some whistle le whistleblowers, some leaks coming from Facebook that shows you exactly who and what Mark, Z Mark Zuckerberg really is. So I'm looking forward to that interview coming up at 945. Keep it here for that and more on The Benjamin Dixon show. Good morning, everybody. 
everybody. Y'all know who it is. Y'all know the voice. Y'all know the sound. It's your boy James Bond Williams. DJ Exclusive is in the building. Good morning, y'all. Y'all know I couldn't stay away too long. Y'all better be glad I'm here because only one person sent me something to bring my buddy in. But that's okay. I said I digress. I still come. Okay. So I'm here on my day off again. So I know that, right? Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Keep it locked in. Y'all got more coming up on the bench and bitches. So y'all, y'all stay tuned. All right. Good morning, everybody. The Benjamin Dixon Show is only possible with listener support. Go to www.patreon.com forward slash the BPD show. Welcome, welcome back, everybody. Today is Wednesday, October 6, 2021. James, you know, you are simultaneously <laughs> indispensable, irreplaceable, but I can't stand you, man. What's going over? That's right. Beyonce made that song for me, Irreplaceable. Uh, that's why I was singing in the karaoke contest and I won singing it. So, you know, it's, it's just for me. Please stop. <laughs> to the left, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> How you doing this morning, brother? You okay? Everything that goes in the cash app, to the left. <laughs> <laughs> you did that. Good job, man. Good job. <laughs> hey, man, listen. In, in my off time, I'm kind, quite the lyricist, but that's a whole different conversation. Listen, man, um, thank you for jumping in and coming in on your day off because, man, my guy today, Sister Georgia four asked me a question at the end of the last segment that almost sent me to the stratosphere um of the revolution man because my mm. goodness the stuff that's going on around us and the absurdity of it all is enough for us to really ask the question that she asked which was what y'all expect us to do next james what do <laughs> folks expect us to do next when we did everything y'all told us we supposed to do and then they changed rules and then everything that we're doing is being held up by the self um, actualization, you're a fan of movies. Um, you like romantic comedies, um, uh, James. Yeah, you put my you put my tea out there, man. Damn. Yeah, I, I do love, like rom coms. <laughs> I I love I love romantic comedies. It's like this. It's like the coming of age. All of a sudden, like everything falls together. This is your moment. And uh, I actually had a, a romantic comedy moment myself riding around uh, downtown Akron, Ohio, on one of those uh, gentrifier scooters. You know what I mean? I was riding through like, man, I'm like, here I am. This is my moment. I'm young. I'm free. And bro, why do I feel like we are all just, you know, side actors in the romantic comedy that Kirsten Cinema Cinema believes that she's living in. This this <laughs> one Repu- this well yeah almost said Republican, but that's what she is amounting to be. Right? Wow. This, this Democratic senator from the state of Arizona is living her best life, dressing her, you know, eclectic way and having her curtsy moment and and you know she's in a triathlon and they're writing articles about her. So this is her time to shine. At the expense of all of us who've been fighting for stuff, and it's not just her, right? There's Joe Manchin. There's a whole list of other Democratic senators. But those two in particular, I want to take a look um, mm. at their reaction because I'm sorry, uh, uh, Senator Cinema. What did you expect the people to do to just stand by and let you live your best life while you're standing in the way of ours? Here's a clip from a DACA recipient uh, named Karina who directly tried to ask Kirsten Cinema, if she would support a pathway to citizenship in the reconciliation bill. Now, this is a citizen or this is her, one of her constituents who is asking her a question. And I want you to watch how Kirsten Cinema reacted. Senator, hello. How are you? Good. Sorry, I'm just, I'm Katina. I don't know if you remember me. I just want to know if um, you can commit, as, as my senator, as you, if you can commit to passing a reconciliation that could provide a pathway to citizenship for immigrants. We have been waiting for this for too long. I just need to know if you can commit for people to be protected like me and many others. Can you commit to that, Senator? I'm just asking a simple question. I'm being 
vulnerable right now to you. My dad passed away last year and he didn't get to reunite with my family. I don't want to disturb you, but at the same time, I just want to see if you, I can get a commitment from you. So this is my life and the life of millions in the line. All right, Senator. I see that you don't want to respond. Now, now, James, uh, this took place on a plane uh, earlier this week. Uh, Kirsten Cinema was asked questions by um, people who were leaving. They were leaving her classroom. They followed her. They asked her questions and they went into the restroom with her to ask her more questions. Um, <laughs> and and all of a sudden, the people who are coming to her defense are Republicans are white supremacists, quite frankly, like the Charlie Kirks, little Charlie Kirk is coming to the defense of Kirsten Cinema. Ben Shapiro is Tucker Carlson is coming to the defense of Kirsten Cinema. So that makes me ask the question, whose side is she really on if the Republicans are now coming all out in order to defend her from protesters who want to ask her questions and hold her accountable? So, I mean, there's a whole lot more, man, but you've been following this along with us. And um, and I think she thought that this was that that this movie was going to end with a happy ending, but she didn't realize, man. The those those cameras turn into paparazzi really quickly. Oh, she knows. <laughs> they definitely know. They just don't care. That's mm. evident by the way she just sat there and didn't say anything. And then, of course, with the other Republicans, GOP, all the rest of those turds, um, when they come up to it, that's that's how they do. They did the same thing with Nikki. When Nikki said what she said about testicle gate, they mm -hmm. jumped on her side to try to defend her real quick. So the same thing is going to happen with cinema is uh they going to try to defend her real quick, try to make them uh, switch sides or say, hey, look at this. I got your person over here. You need to come on over here, too, and, and get on the right side of history. Uh, no, I'm good. I'm good, mm -hmm. love. Enjoy. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. No, and, you, and you're exactly right. That's exactly what they did with Nicki Minaj, right? With the, the entire, what was it? Uh, you said testicle gate, uh, the Trinidadian testicle gate. Um, yeah. The same people. <laughs> Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens, Tucker Carlson, man, like you, you have to understand whose side you on based on who comes to your defense. Um, and, and now here's the next clip. This is from Joe Biden, President Biden. And he was asked specifically about the techniques of these protesters, uh, you know, confronting these senators wherever they are. Um, I loved his response. Uh, this is not just per, as it pertains to Kirsten Cinema. We played last week the protesters who were on the kayaks. Bro, they were on kayaks and they pulled up on Joe Manchin's yacht <laughs> and and they forced them to come out and speak to them. And all of a sudden you have Republicans who are like, oh, this is a bridge too far. You know, don't go after them on their yachts. Don't go after them on the planes. Uh, here's Joe <laughs> Biden's reaction to that. And just one, Mr. President, uh, you're talking about how you have 48 Democratic votes right now. The other two uh, have been pressured over the weekend by activists. Joe Manchin had people on kayaks show up to his boat to yell at him. Senator Sinema last night was chased into a restroom. Do you think that those tactics are crossing a line? I don't think they're appropriate tactics, but it happens to everybody. From the, <laughs> the only people it doesn't happen to are people who have Secret Service standing around them. Um, so uh, it's, it's, it's part of the process. <laughs> good, good answer, Sleepy Joe. <laughs> you did it, Joe. He laughed. Hey, Joe. <laughs> Shut up, bitch. You did it there, bro. <laughs> Joe. You did it, Joe. <laughs> that was a good answer, happen, Joe. I bet you that don't happen to answer. Kamala either. <laughs> It better not. I mean, I'm just saying, like, well, she got Secret Service, right? Uh, and right, that's the point. exactly. If, if you don't have the luxury of Secret Service, then, like, it's, listen, dude, not to, not to, like, make this about me, <laughs> but when I, when I did the story of Michael Bloomberg, um, man, I had people come after me. I had no, no kind of protection. Now, listen, at the time, I was nothing more than a podcaster, which is a distinguished profession, but if podcasters can be held accountable to the people in whatever form or fashion, why do these politicians think that they are above reproach? Like we cannot pull up and say, hey, you are taking our taxpayer dollars. You are held accountable mm. to us, Joe Manchin, Kirsten Cinema. And if you thought this song was about you, <laughs> wait till you get to the bridge because the people got something to say. <laughs> Man, I'm in my bag today. <laughs> I see. <man. laughs> 
<laughs> but you're right though, and, and it's one of those things. It's just like okay, it does need to happen, and 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 yes, the approach may be like off kilter a little bit, but I think the girl on the plane did actually very well. But as us being your constituents, and we we're paying your bills and everything, and you're supposed to be working for us. If I see you out in the street or on the plane in the bathroom, wherever the hell you are, I'm going to come ask questions about yes. why aren't you feeding me what I need to be fed? Why aren't you giving me the insurance that I need? Why aren't you doing these things for me? These questions need to be answered. And since you won't get on the on TV and do everything else and answer all these questions, then damn it, we going to get the answer in the street, man. We're going to get it the street way. <laughs> right, pull up. We're going to pull up. My God, and I want, I want to get it twisted. Act TV, the street way might not be the street way that I'm referring to. The street way is I'm going to approach you in public and talk to you. Okay, no one try to get it twisted. <laughs> And it makes sure we gotta, okay. we gotta translate just in case they make a sound like this, you know. You know, because conservatives watch, you know, I got I got a couple of conservatives who watch try to get some sound bites. So that I understand, James. You gotta put context. I wanna shift gears exactly. to uh I wanna skip over D one. We'll come back to D. Let's go to E. Uh Mark Zuckerberg. Um, cause James, like you're all in the algorithm, you know this space really, really well. Um, and the whistleblower has uh, Francis Hagen. Um, or Hagen, you know, I can't pronounce last names. Um, <laughs> she has been testifying and laying down some damning information about the reality of the ideology of Facebook because of the power of Mark Zuckerberg, who still holds 55 percent of the company. There's no one to hold Mark Zuckerberg accountable except Mark Zuckerberg's ego. And he is the Fuhrer over a nation with almost 2.5 billion people in it. They've even <laughs> talked about giving Bloomberg. <laughs> Hello, Michael. Um, there was an article discussing giving Facebook a seat at the United Nations, my man. Now, what? what's this to listen to? At the United Nations. That's power. And it's all in the hands of little Mark Zuckerberg. Listen to the whistleblower as she describes. Um, I want to go with uh, E1. Let's listen to this um, whistleblower. Mark holds a very unique role in um, the tech industry in that he holds uh, over 55% of all the voting shares for Facebook. Um, there are no similarly powerful companies that are as uh, unilaterally controlled. Um, and in, in the end, the buck stops with Mark. There is no one currently holding Mark accountable but himself. There's no one holding Mark accountable but himself. James, considering the fact that Mark Zuckerberg has every data point on every single one of us, right. not just what we did on his site, but what he recorded with our audio, how does that make you feel? <laughs> Zucky Zuck having a, a seat at the table? Mm -mm. Mm. Mm. I'm not here for it, dude. I mean, it's, it's certain lanes for certain people, and that's just not one of those lanes. What? That's just like, mm, prime example, mm. Trump getting his tail in the White House. That's right. It's the same thing. Right. What, what kind of relations or what are you going to bring to the table that's going to Oh, I got it. <laughs> Money. That's what it is. Money. He lost six billion dollars in one day, and he's okay. Sorry, I'm sorry. Seven billion in one day, and he's cool. Cool. Got it. <laughs> James. Now, here's the funny thing about it. I didn't even realize this until you started talking. The same folks. You put the, you pointed this out with Nicki Minaj, and we were just talking about um, uh, Kirsten Cinema and how Tucker Carlson and Ben Shapiro and Little Charlie. Kirk all came to their rescue. Guess who has been coming to the rescue of Mark Zuckerberg and Facebook in light of this whistleblower? The same folks. Tucker Carlson, Ben <laughs> Shapiro. All of a sudden, they're like, oh, Mark Zuckerberg, he's an okay guy. Folks, come on, man. Can, you, can we not see what's going on? Mark Zuckerberg is, 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 is a right-wing incel who just happened to be a billionaire and could probably catch a couple of uh, ladies at that point, but I digress. And now we've entrusted him with the destiny of the data of 2.5 billion people and you want to give him a seat at the United Nations? The hell is wrong with y'all people? And somebody said it best, like, what is, is he? he's a country now? <laughs> Facebook country? Zuck country? No, hell no. Mm. Not here mm. for that. Nah, no, not at all. 
Huh. Um, there's another clip. We're going to pick up this story at 9.45. Uh, Ahmad Baba is coming from Rant Media. He's going to join us, and we're going to play more from the whistleblower uh, and get more analysis on that topic because, man, I'm telling you, we're not just fighting against white supremacy. We're fighting against an algorithm that has been optimized for white supremacy. Mm. You know mm-hmm. what I mean? Like, like mm. the, it's a lie. And it extends over into our fight against COVID-19. Um, the same people who are su- supporting Mark Zuckerberg, the same people who are supporting Joe Manchin and Kirsten Cinema, the same people who supported Nicki Minaj and the uh, Trinidadian <laughs> testicular gate. My God, they are now out here making sure that you are willing to run into the storm unprotected, the storm of COVID-19. They literally want you to take your chances with natural immunity versus the vaccine. Now, all the people that I listed at this point were nothing more than like internet celebrities and commentators, right? Or or Mm -hmm. Tucker Carlson from Fox News. This is Senator Ron Johnson from Wisconsin, a a sitting senator who is encouraging people indirectly to take on COVID-19 and get some natural immunity. Because guess what? It's your right. It's your right. It's your body. It's your choice. Not women, but you who want to die of COVID-19. Let's take a listen to this clip. Why am I giving you this information? Well, first of all, on the social media, this is suppressed. This is being censored. People like me that would even broach the subject of theirs have been attacked. But the main point I'm trying to make is those individuals who believe in their own health autonomy, believe in their own personal freedom. Many of who have already been infected with COVID are reading the science, believe on base what they're reading, that their natural immunity is probably as if not more effective than the vaccinated immunity, have chosen not to get the vaccine. That's their right. You may not agree with that, but it's not your body. It's not your right to impose on someone else a mandate to take the vaccine or take away their job, take away their livelihood, take away their health care. These mandates are unconstitutional, but they are going to be incredibly harmful for military readiness and for our health care system. They're also going to be incredibly corrosive to our society. I've been inundated even well before President Biden announced his ill-advised and unconstitutional mandates. I've been inundated with emails and letters and phone calls from people who are so concerned about being coerced, being forced to take a vaccine under duress. (laughs) Let me say this real quick. Yeah, man. So y'all can mandate a woman's body where she can't do what she want to do with it, but then you come back and fight about mandating a vaccine. Let's make it make sense, people, because this got this this stuff stupid, bro. It's stupid. <laughs> winner, winner, chicken dinner. That's it, right there, right? That's the that's the hypocrisy. That's the hypocrisy that's baked into their calculus. We can we can tell them like we'll, we'll pull them to the side and say, hey, hey guys, did you understand that you're being hypocritical here? And, and, and we try to explain it to them. We have a logical debate with them. And all the while, they're sitting back laughing like, you moron. Of course I'm a hypocrite. Of course I'm going to use VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System, and put it up there to make everyone feel that because this is being said from the halls of our Senate by a, seat, a sitting U.S. senator, he is making the assertion that it is dangerous. That red line is to scare you and say that it is so dangerous to take the vaccine. But he's using that, but he's also not telling you the fine print that all of the reports that are in the VAERS, the Vaccine Adverse Event Reporting System that he's using on that graph, James, they're not researched, they're not investigated, they are self-reported. Anybody can get online and type in anything and say, I had a bad reaction. And that is amassed into the data that this man is using in his propaganda. So he knows he's being a hypocrite. He's doing this on purpose. And the only conclusion I can come to, well, actually, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to slow down on my conclusion because it's going to take a minute to unpack it. I might have to save that for like the after party because, I mean, one plus one equals two, man. Like they're trying hmm. to maximize the number of people who are getting killed. Yeah. 
It makes no sense. And I'm I'm still just the whole point of this that you build up natural immunity. Um no. I mean it, it it may be possible, but I know my mom and my sister, they wouldn't want to get this crap again. <laughs> I know they wouldn't. So building up natural immunity and it just knowing everything that mom went through when she had COVID. Mm. No. No, and it's still not. It's not any better. I, I know mom has those long term. Uh, the what is it? The long term COVID, COVID effects. She's still long yeah. COVID. She's still feeling some of that. So I don't, I don't understand why anybody would want to go through that. You're going to take a risk of being on a ventilator, being put on a ventilator, and not waking the hell up. I want y'all. I, I want people to understand that and realize that about this thing. This thing is nothing to play with. <laughs> nothing, man. Listen, I'm gonna, I'm working out uh, something with my brother-in-law. He is a um, um, he's a minister and he is a chaplain in residence. And he has been telling me stories of um, all the people he has had to help grieve. You know, um, it's mm. nonstop. It's all day, every day. I'm also going to bring on some funeral home directors, right? Because I need people to understand that business is good right now. I'm also going to bring on some some pastors who can tell you that the way that their congregations have been staying afloat over the last two years, they're not having Sunday morning service. They're having all day long Saturday funeral services. They're staying afloat because people are booking the buildings for funerals. And they want you listen to this next clip. This next clip involves our favorite, uh, Alex Jones. But I just want you to listen, and, and, and I know we're running over time, but I want to take my time with this, man. Um, listen to the absurdity, the absurdity of where they want us to think, where they want our thinking to go, and the mindset that is necessary to be willing to embrace possibly dying because you don't want to take the vaccine. Listen to Alex Jones in this clip. You know, this governor that said yesterday, God doesn't love you if you don't take the vaccine. And then she had the audacity. She actually had the testicular fortitude. She may be a man who says all of the major religious leaders have said there are no religious exemptions. Well, uh, excuse me, but your major religious leaders are on the tape. They are going to be controlled by the Antichrist. Why does Satan want depopulation? He wants depopulation because he wants revenge against the human race because we took his place. God made man in his image and after his likeness. The, sh the shot actually affects your DNA, the oxyribonucleic acid. It actually changes the molecular structure of, of humans who are created in God's image and after his likeness. That's why the government is wanting to push this vaccine so so heavily and say if you don't take it we're going to it literally you. marks your dna okay wait a minute hold on hold on did you hear See, that too? I, I all i wait when i saw the notes it said alex jones i thought alex jones was going to be the wild one in this clip <laughs> my god today that was right-wing pastor tony spell <laughs> okay. talking with alex jones <laughs> about new york governor kathy holchel <laughs> James, my goodness, I wasn't ready for that. He say it changes the coding and all this other stuff. I was trying to make sure I'm like, I got all my fingers and toes. <laughs> I ain't got no extra growth nowhere. So Listen I mean, I guess everything is okay. <laughs> what? And then what? He, then what? He, <laughs> and then and then and then man, and then he uh, uh, he he spelled out uh, or he he. He spoke out the full DNA, right? It was like, oh, I can say the the real, the full word <laughs> DNA, and that's going to be so impressive. And I'm sure somebody was impressed by that. And I'm sure there's a lot of people because Alex Jones transmits to millions of people every single day. And they're all back there like, yes, praise the Lord. <laughs> Give me COVID-19. Praise he the Lord like and pass the COVID. <laughs> <laughs> Be it. I praise the Lord and pass the COVID. <laughs> That's terrible, bro. I see, but he looks Becca like a crooked get... politician. He he looks like Eric Trump almost, and oh, man. This, he looks mm -hmm. annoying, annoying as crap. Like, what are you? What is this stuff you're talking about? It makes no sense. Yeah. You're using big words.
<laughs> right. He thinks he's using big words. He thinks he's using big words. <laughs> I Google DNA. I ain't gonna let Google DNA. Because <laughs> I don't know what it is. <laughs> okay. Deoxy remonucleic acid. Ooh. You're so smart, man. This is what we're dealing with. We're actually dealing with people. That that this is this guy is like a this is like a movie. No, no, for real. Like you put this guy on a television set and you would think it was over the top. You would look at this and say, there's no way people will fool for this. Right? You look at this and say, there's absolutely, but there are millions of people every single day who are falling for the conspiracy theories of the likes of Alex Jones and all of these right wing pastors. And I actually got one more clip before we go to break, James. Um, it, it, it doesn't stop. Um, these are anti-vax protesters um, and they pause for comments on the Brooklyn Bridge. I want you to listen um, to the thinking and the rationale or the irrationality. Let's take a listen in. Now, What's apologies to the to the listening audience. You did not get the full impact of it, but all the noise that you heard corresponded with yes, James. That man just went over there and flipped over. Um, was that a testing site? Um, and a free COVID over. testing site. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. What what being uh, now? Because I could barely hear the audio of what she said. Mm-hmm. I'm so confused. It's, it's a lot of things going on here in this clip. It's a lot of things going on in this clip. Because first of all, didn't she have a great, didn't that a great Britain flag? Am I, am I tripping? <laughs> yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. That's one thing. Okay. Mm, it's a lot of things going on in this clip that no, I just no, need. Nice. We got time. Dice it because, you know, uh, uh, Rebecca's <laughs> internet did what mine was doing a few minutes ago. So we got time. Dissect it, doctor. Oh, hold on. Right. Uh, but, but dissect it in a second. But look at my man right here next to the van. He gonna punch the he gonna punch the van. And then he thought about it. He was like, "That was probably the wrong thing to do." <laughs> he said, "I can't knock over the van, so let me knock over the free COVID testing site." That's the enemy. The people who are out there sacrificing their time and their energy. But go ahead, James. No, I'm just like, okay, you got her with the the Great Britain flag. No health mandates. Health freedom now. Health freedom. <laughs> It's, it's this is a lot now they're they are protesting vaccine mandates mm-hmm. is that what this is they're they're they're, they're mm. protesting vaccine mandates and mask mandates mind you it's not just the vaccine mandates oh Thank okay yes yeah, so, so yeah the first the first Thank call you. I saw I, was i'm about to say i know truth the dragon probably is cussing me out in the chat room I right know. now yes, <laughs> i know everybody's cussing us out because i said it was a great britain flag but that just speaks okay that just speaks to the fact of imperialism the sun never set on the british empire come on right. all right let's keep Shut going <laughs> i missed it okay go ahead james yeah literally i, flag so play. Your, I agree with your ass too <laughs> <laughs> Wait, so, okay, I need, now I need some, because uh, now there's another sign in the back that says what is happening in Melbourne. I'm so confused by this clip. I don't, oh, I don't, let's I don't, see. Let's see, because you know what? Here's the thing. Um, and actually, now I do know what it's tied to. And and, and so they're showing some international solidarity um, and they want us to Google. So what is happening in Melbourne? Um, because these are the same type of protests that we're seeing. I'll speak up a bit, Ben. Um, Go for it. So th- there was another clip in the protest. Good morning, everyone. Um, that uh, showed them the protest stop, I believe, by the Australian consulate or embassy, um, and they started chanting, you know, in in support of Australia. Um, I wish we had a, m- uh, our uh, our member Mark from Aus with us, but um, I'm sure he's in the comments yelling about it. Um, it was. Be- I-, I think it's tied to a lot of the mandates and the clo- and the shutdowns in australia 
um, because of the control that a portion of the country has um, with res- with regard to restrictions uh, when things happen. Yeah, I got yeah. it. I found it, David. Yeah, I Go see. Ahead, uh, uneasy said they weren't allowed because uneasy is in uh, Melbourne as well too. She said they weren't allowed outside after nine p.m. Mm. Uh, And this is from NPR anti-vaccine protesters class with police in Melbourne, Australia for the second day. It's been a violent few days in Melbourne, Australia, where construction workers and other demonstrators are with the police as they protest the government's COVID-19 vaccine requirements. Check it out, though. Think about um, think about the nations that have been handling this the best. I think about New Zealand. Like if there's anywhere that you want to be during this pandemic, it's like New Zealand. Last I checked, they had this thing completely under control unless something has changed. Um, I let these folks are I don't they want to seem as though they have this international solidarity Mm -hmm. with anti-vaxxers all around the globe. And they do. Right. They do have. But they want to make it seem like they are on the right side, that they are the right people to be in the streets protesting. They are the right, like, because the worst thing in the world, James, is that they get a vaccine mandate or if they get a mask mandate. I want to be sure they include a mask mandate in these protests. These folks want us to get COVID-19. And I've never seen people so excited or so committed and so dedicated to their own destruction. Yeah, that's real, Dan. But I'm going to juxtapose and ask another question. Help me out. And I, and I appreciate the solidarity and I, and I, you know, y'all solidarity, yeah, standing up or whatever, but y'all doing all of this here in America and we barely can keep our SHIT under control. What does, what do these protesters think destroying property? Cause basically now that's what you're doing. What is this going to do? Don't y'all come at me talking about we did that during Black Lives Matter. That's totally different, different, bro. <laughs> yeah. Listen, but I'm listen, just like the COVID nineteen testing site does some good, right? The COVID nineteen test, like this is a testing site that he's t- destroying. So testing we're not even, site. Like, we're not even talking about a vaccine. We're not even talking about masks. We're talking about testing. That's the enemy now. And I want to ask these people how many of them actually have health care. What are they talking about? Uh, health freedom now. They have literally aligned themselves with the very people who want to ensure that not now one of them on that bridge could ever go to see a doctor after the police come in and bust their heads open. Yeah. Bro, America right. is just doomed. America's get <laughs> America is doomed. There's so much separation in this country. It's ridiculous. And I wish I could say what, what I wanted to say, but man, but, it's but, like, I'm going to keep it clean. James, <laughs> if nothing else, there will be dancing. There will be music. Uh, what's a revolution if there isn't any dancing? Take us to a break. When we come back, we're going to like it or not. We're going to be joined at 945 by Ahmed Baba of Rant Media as we discuss more about Facebook and all of the whistleblower implications. DJ exclusive. It's in your hand. All right, y'all. Y'all make sure y'all stay tuned. Like it or not. It's starting up next. It's playing that gives me a chance to step away and get some coffee. Oh, yeah. We'll be right back. Enjoy the video. Yeah, y'all know what time it is. Good morning, y'all. Get your coffee, your tea, your drink, drink, whatever it is you need. It's time for like it or not, y'all. 9 a.m. to 10 30. Yeah, like it or not is on your channel. Yeah, politics and culture is we change scan like we're supposed to. Yeah, interviews and all the news we get to choose what gets the views. Like it or not, when Queen is on, it's starting now, so stick around. Like it or not. Y'all stick around Oh, like it or not It's starting now Like it or not It's about to go down Like it or not With Benjamin Dixon Starts now <laughs> good morning, good morning, good morning, everybody. What you have just heard was the smooth, sultry sounds of James Bub Williams, DJ exclusive, and the like it or not. 
remix. Like it or not. God dang it. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm trying to do something professional here, man. I, I'm, I'm trying to run a serious operation here, Jay. <laughs> And then David is Tra- like talking about Rebecca Azo, <laughs> David. <laughs> and then KMZ in the chat talking about Ben Dummy. No, that, <laughs> that, that was actually Matt Claremont on YouTube, but he oh, took okay. my thoughts on it. <laughs> you know, my apologies to all the professionals in the audience who are like, what are these people doing on my television screen acting this way? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> you might want to talk to Act TV about that one. <laughs> Welcome okay. to Like It or Not, where we're free to tell the truth. <laughs> and not care who doesn't like it and sing what we want to sing to. <laughs> now, if you're just tuning in, I know you're like, what in the entire world is going on on my television set? Uh, but if you've been tuned in since this morning, uh, special thank you to Georgia Ford on the clock, as always, doing phenomenal work. And I didn't even get a chance, James, to talk to her about what she did uh, downtown Minneapolis yesterday covering that um, mm. the homeless encampment. Um, but it was it was dope to see her out there in her element, like in the field and in the um, uh, in the streets uh, with her camera. And so shout out to her. And then obviously the last segment, we talked about Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin. By the time we get to like it or not, man. <laughs> it's time to let the hell down. <laughs> I mean, this, oh, granted, Rebecca's the only one that has hair out of all of us, but you know, mm, Rebecca mm. gets to let her hair down. But does she? <laughs> does she though? Does she? Does she? Does she? <laughs> she really have hair? <laughs> what you say, Ben? Wait a damn minute! You ain't getting me. Hey, nope, nope. Mm-mm. You ain't about to get me cussed out. Hey, listen, listen. Nah, let me tell you. Listen, I bet you. I bet you her internet start working now. <laughs> I bet she's gonna pop in, Dwayne. She there, ain't she? <laughs> let me stop. She outside the door. She outside the door. Good morning to Rebecca Azor, who, like myself, is experiencing internet trouble uh, here in the city of Atlanta, uh, which yes. is an infrastructure issue. It is most certainly an infrastructure issue. And St. James, we've been covering uh, that fight on the national stage. Uh, see, I could take anything silly and make it serious. I could take anything serious and make it silly. I don't even want to talk about the infrastructure bill right now. I just wanted to show y'all how it could flex. But let's do this next clip um, from Right Wing Watch. Shout out to them over there, man. They are relentless. They keep an eye on evil jellicles every single day because the... Internet Ministry of Evangelicals is really what's helping all of this derangement around the vaccine, uh, all this fear of critical race theory and all of this big lie from January 6th. It's being taught and preached to uh, the masses every single day on these evangelical streams. Um, So Right Wing Watch is a phenomenal organization and they have been keeping track of it. And we've been able to use their clips uh, because they've done the diligence. And here's the clip from them. And this clip is of North Carolina Lieutenant Governor Mark Robinson. Again, our uh, our our uh, friend, <laughs> you'll you'll recognize him when you see him. Oh God! Uh, declaring <laughs> that a television set is a one-eyed devil sitting right in your living room for the purpose of destroying your mind, and saying that the word media stands for most evil demon in America. Oh man, do we not love our acronyms <laughs> as preachers? R- run run the clip. <laughs> See, we are forgetting all these common sense things. Right. Common sense and wisdom that comes directly from the wisdom of our body. You see, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, when people wanted truth, they went to the Bible. They went to the church. They went to the pastor. Now when people want truth, they turn on the television set. Now I'm going to go ahead and tell you like this. That television set is a one-eyed devil sitting right in your living room for the purpose of destroying your mind. You know, I heard the media describe like this one time, and I'm inclined to believe it. The media, M-E-D-I-A, most evil demon in America. I just had a I, I just had a swat away, hey, bro. I just had a swat away a fly, you know, because I live in Georgia. But I wanted to say that so that they can clip it and say that I'm a demon because I'm dressed in all black like the omen. You know what I mean? So um, most evil demon in America, 
and this is not a what? he's not he's he's not there in the capacity of a preacher. He's there in his capacity as the lieutenant governor of North the, Carolina. Looking and like that's what I was about to say. <laughs> <laughs> like I'm this this man again, pastoring these people. I ain't got nobody's uh, theological whatever it's called degree. Ain't got nobody church uh, <laughs> experience. You just out here preaching this fake word. You think look like you got a Bible on the podium right now. It ain't even no Bible <laughs> punk. That's a, the Constitution. You just folded it up multiple times and put it on the dang on podium. <laughs> the one eyed devil in the living room. Really. <laughs> Now, now, so listen, my James. question. Go ahead, go ahead, David. My question. Only is, white man on America who can interrupt me like that. Go ahead, David. <laughs> <laughs> my, my my question is: in local politics, people don't really, you know, go to the events that often. They're not, that, you know, they're not highly attended. So, when they voted for him, did they know they were voting for him? Did they know they were voting for a pastor? Did they know they were voting for for this? <laughs> I'm sure they did, because that plays well. You got to understand, man, there's nothing. There's the most effective form of communication in this country is religiosity. Mm. I could give mm. you a demonstration. James, a charge to keep I have. Let me see. If you, well, let me see. Let me see how deep you go in the roots. Uh, I, I got to do an easy one. Uh, uh, um, let, me, let me see. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound. Oh, D James, I know you went to Sunday school, bro. <laughs> Forget about it. The point is this. Did what, I, what Dr. Matt said in Sunday school drop out, bro. <laughs> James. Now, Mama Gwen, now listen. You ain't gonna flex on me that hard, Mama Gwen. <laughs> She'll tell you. Eight, like eight five mama, seven. Six, we went to seven, church. Wait. We went to church with Mama like up to about 12, 13. And mm. then that was it. And that was in Alabama in the country. We really ain't have Sunday okay, school. We okay, ain't get so up better. For, so, so forget the heathen on the screen. Forget the heathen. <laughs> oh, who you? Look at you. Look at you. No, 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 James. Don't, 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 don't do me that. Don't do me like that. <laughs> let's 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 have a cessation of hostilities. I, I'm going to step back and I'm, I'm going to digress. Will you allow me to digress? You, you can digress. You got to take a drink, but digress. <laughs> The last thing that you want to do is ever flex on your friend to go all the way back to college with you. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to shut up here. So don't don't take these two heathens on the screen word for it. <clears throat> OK, just listen to it. Matter of fact, the funny thing about this clip, James, is that he's not completely wrong. The first part of the right. clip was kind of, you know, it's just enough truth for us to be like, OK, you got my attention. Dwayne, do me a favor and play the first part of that clip again so we can show you the little little modicum of truth that's in it. See, we are forgetting all these common sense things. Right. Common sense and wisdom that comes directly from the wisdom of our body. You see, 100 years ago, 150 years ago, when people wanted truth, they went to the Bible. They went to the church. They went to the pastor. Now when people want truth, they turn on the television set. Right here. Now I'm going to go ahead and mm. tell you like this. Oh, mm. no, 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 no. I'm sorry. That's the part. That's the... Not, no, no, no. For the, purpose of the, destroy the next part that is what is, he's getting ready to say. That television set is a one-eyed devil sitting right in your living room for the purpose of destroying your mind. Pause. Pause. Right there. The television <laughs> set. Now, listen, if this brother don't say nothing else true, besides the fact that he and I both like chicken wings, probably to the same extent, greater or lesser extent, that man spoke the truth right there, right? The media, I don't believe that they are the most evil demon in America. I believe people who understand the truth and manipulate it to gaslight us to get their own political power, like this brother right here, I think he doesn't realize that he represents the greatest evil in this country, people who know the truth and turn it around for the bidding of political power. At the expense, James, of all the people who catching COVID-19 in that auditorium right there. All the people mm. who going to catch COVID-19 when they leave that auditorium and take it home to somebody who didn't <laughs> even go to that event. Because this is the context of everything that they're talking about. They're not talking about the restoration of voting rights. He's not talking about qualified immunity. He's not talking about the infrastructure. He's up here preaching about protecting everyone from having to take the vaccine and having to social distance and wear a mask. 
the absurdity of Terrible. it. Terrible, man. Yeah, but I'm going to have to uh, disagree with you, Ben. It ain't the TV. It ain't the TV at all. It's it's phones, internet, Facebook, Ooh. social media. Ooh. Man, I you have like all these devices that you are walking around with daily to the point you can even watch TV on the dang on thing now. So yeah, yeah, yeah. it, ain't the, it yeah. ain't the one-eyed devil that's in my living room. That's only good for playing PlayStation. It's these dang on phones, these two laptops that I got, the five thousand iPads that are around the house. Oh, it's all yes. you take it with you. <laughs> mm, mm. 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 The revolution. I, I want to say the revolution won't be televised. It will be streamed. But it will be streamed. Doing is, is not, <laughs> what they're doing is not the revolution. What they're doing is 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 gaslighting. The gaslighting won't be televised. The gaslighting will be streamed. And you're right, James. It's coming now. It's coming to us at every single turn. Matter of fact, yes. the, it is so intelligent. We're going to be joined by uh, Ahmad Baba. I done said that brother's name three different ways, three different times. <laughs> you did. <laughs> I don't know what it is about names. I just can't. I mean, unless it's some kind of colonized, you know, <laughs> Anglican, you know, Johnson. <laughs> I just, yeah. man. Oh, you so black. Go, I gotta, man, no, really, no, really. I gotta, I got somebody gotta decolonize my language, man. My dialect gotta be decolonized. Cause I just know, seriously, like my mouth cannot form certain phrases, and it's, it's kind of embarrassing at this point. But good morning, America. Uh, anyway, let's get ready to take a break, James. Um, we have a lot of clips, and I know we just came back, but I want us to. I want us to take a break and get ready for the full conversation on Facebook, because this is the thing. And you set it up properly. The thing is, is that the level of control is so granular that mm. I hope people understand is as you scroll on your screen, on your phone, the very next image that you see is intentionally selected by Facebook and other social media hmm. organizations to maximize their profit, no matter what it costs you personally. And I, I, there's, there's a lot of documentaries about it, but I just need people to understand that every single thing that you see on your phone is designed to get money from you and to exploit your information. And this is what we're fighting, James, because we've seen the perfect alignment between that technology side and Mark Zuckerberg and the white supremacy side and the likes of, of, of Tucker Carlson, Ben Shapiro, Ch little Charlie Kirk, and even um, uh, Professor, oh, no, I'm not going to do that, mm, Lieutenant Governor, mm, the Lieutenant Governor from ben. North Carolina. Uh, he may be black, but he's certainly ben. aligned with white supremacy. James, you got to get me out of here before I get in trouble. Ben. <laughs> Got to get me. I, I think I need to break it. Ben. 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 I can't even press the button. Funny part about it is some truth. I'll make you move like your baby who rolled the fire. Like you got more coming wild. right. This is what happens when Rebecca don't have her tail here, but that's okay. Just <laughs> in the crowd, good. The and also what read this coming. Miss Nuru said, Ben, you're a 10 piece. And he's a 50 piece with fries with blue cheese with lemon pepper sprinkles. <laughs> Oh, here goes Shane Dragon said, my name is Fisk, Reverend William Fisk. <laughs> Shout out Spider-Man, King Ben, okay? <laughs> I cannot stand y'all. Good morning, Mom and Daddy. Good morning, Mom and Daddy. If y'all are in the room, I know y'all are somewhere. Good morning to y'all and good morning, Q. Y'all stay tuned. Hello, Mother. Mother pops in and says, Bubba, Mom, I've been calling your dang name all morning. Dang, woman. Good morning, Mother. <laughs> All right, y'all. Y'all, welcome back to the screen, my brother from another mother. Big to me. James. See, I got my, my techno going on now. Yeah, I'm I all like over that. the place. <laughs> man, man, we got range, man. We got range on this show. Um, Absolutely. I I want to I want to shift to a couple of stories, uh, just a couple of headlines, um, and we'll we'll discuss them at length when uh, the internet in Atlanta gets 
uh, gets fixed because that's where Azor is this morning. Queen Azor is this morning. And we kind of get out of her. We get besides ourselves when Rebecca's not here. So uh, we need a teacher to get back to class as soon as possible. <laughs> Hey, Stangy, I have nothing to do with this conversation, Rebecca. It wasn't me. It wasn't me. Um, the New York Police Department uh, union president has resigned uh, after the FBI raided his home and his union office. I'm reading from CNN. Uh, this was breaking news this morning. The president of the New York Police Department's second largest union resigned Tuesday night after the FBI research, uh, searched his home and the union's headquarters early in the day, according to a letter obtained by CNN from multiple sources. Um, we have some audio of that story and, and and, and Dwayne, thank you for being Johnny on the spot. I did it in the complete opposite order. Uh, let's take a listen in to the update on the res- resignation of this union executive. We know the SBA president, Ed Mullins. He's known for having a fiery personality, oftentimes taking to social media to battle it out with city leaders. Well, now today there are new developments for this controversial leader. FBI officials raid the offices which he oversees. It is still unclear at this time why the raids actually took place on Worth Street here in Lower Manhattan, but we were there as the agents carried out their federal investigation. A handful of FBI agents exited the SBA offices holding on tight to two boxes filled with undisclosed objects as they headed directly into their field offices at Federal Plaza. The agents refused to answer any questions regarding their morning raid at the SBA and another raid at Ed Mullins' home in Port Washington, Long Island. Mullins is the president of the union, which represents 13,000 active and retired NYPD sergeants. Mullins has publicly battled it out with high-profile figures. He is facing a separate departmental disciplinary trial for releasing information on social media about Mayor Bill de Blasio's daughter's arrest during a Black Lives Matter protest. In his daily briefing Tuesday, the mayor confirms the FBI raid is connected to an ongoing investigation. Now, under Mullins, nearly two decades of leadership, the union has been fighting for better pay with contracts resulting in a 40 percent pay increase i reached out to mullen's attorney for a response but i have not received a call back yet oh, back to you oh, nicole oh, oh, whoa, whoa 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 the most important part of that whole conversation was the last sentence when she said police union contract negotiations yielded a 40 percent increase in their salary i would like to hear from the teachers mm. unions. i want to hear mm. from some other unions have y'all ever been able to get that kind of increase. And that's why I labeled this as a union issue, because we got to understand that there's a fundamental difference between what the police unions do and what other unions unions are good. But we're going to find out just how bad police unions are in this investigation. And no, I don't, you know, trust the FBI or like I'm not championing the right. FBI. I got my we, we black folks keep our side eye to them, you know. But at the same time, we're going to sit back and watch them fight. Let them fight. James. You yeah, I, w- I would trust the FBI over regular police. <laughs> <laughs> and that's, that, don't trust neither one of them. But, you know, it's, if, I had to, if I have to choose, it's going to be I the FBI. Choose. I mean, CCI, maybe I don't know too much about this. I'm lying. I do know. No, 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 James, trust me. No. We're not Sorry. mentioning neither one of them. Okay. <laughs> like, I don't that's want like, no that's smoke. Like, don't say this. Don't say the CIA name three times, five times, man. Cause it's like, they got, <laughs> they got people everywhere, bro. They taking out, they taking out black leaders all over the globe, man. Let me get out hmm. of that. Go ahead. <laughs> Being please, God dang it, man. Cause you know, guilty by association, bro. Please come on. Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> James don't got nothing to do with this. I ain't got, got nothing address. to do with it. Okay. I ain't got nothing okay. to do with it. I, I work at no, no, that's okay. But yeah, man, I'm I'm interested to see what the rest of this investigation is going to yield because I think it's going to bust a lot of stuff open with these police union, the police, cops, everything. So hopefully, I'm hoping. But we all know how it turns out. But you know, yeah. putting out there the universe, good things are going to come from this. Yeah. Yeah. No, I mean, listen, um, and we have to understand the FBI is a political organization. It, it just simply is. Mm. Right. I know yeah. they, they try to set themselves aside as um, as being separate and above political influence. But you got to see what happened with the FBI underneath Donald Trump. Right. You can see the twisting of the arms and, and they, they try to have a firewall. I give it to them. I, I give they try to to keep a separation. But it, it, you also have to consider the fact that there's a lot of these ideologies inside the FBI itself, right? White supremacy mm. is not germane only to local policing. 
right? So we got to stand very clearly what the FBI is. And and I'm, the reason I'm taking my time with that is because there's a little bit of judo that's trying to be uh, rhetorical judo, uh, particularly as it pertains to this investigation, because they're trying to neutralize um, our opposition to this form of white, white supremacy. I want to be clear. Police unions are an extension of white supremacy and hmm. white supremacists are mounting their firewall to protect the police unions. James, in the exact same way that we saw Tucker Carlson, little Charlie Kirk, Candace Owens all hmm. step up to help Nicki Minaj in the Trinidadian testicular gate, right? The same way they stepped up to protect Kirsten Cinema and Joe Manchin because they're helping to protect white supremacy by defending the filibuster, right? We're seeing it right here in this. And what they're saying is that how can you dare trust the FBI? I don't. Hmm. But I trust At police all. unions even less. Hmm. And I, I be dead. Mm, mm, I don't even know if I'm going to say that. Mm. But, but I'm going to say it. I think a lot of times, most of these police unions, that's where it contains most of the, the, the crookedness comes from that union. I mean, I hope not. I mean, I don't know enough, but you're not far off. It makes sense. It makes listen sense. To the, bro, listen to what he did to Mayor de Blasio's black daughter, young girl. During, young woman, during the Black Lives Matter protest, Ed Mullins is the one who essentially doxed her. I mean, that's some malicious, malevolent, evil, sadistic stuff coming from the top leader of the police union. So if you really are going to make us choose, if, if, you, if you think that we're incapable of deciding between two evils that we're going to land on here, whether or not we're going to trust the FBI, who was complicit in the murder of Fred Hampton. Yeah, we know that. Who's mm, complicit right. with trying to have Martin Luther King kill himself. Yeah, yeah, no, we, we know that perfectly well, right? Who's complicit <laughs> with so many things throughout American history. Do we have love and affinity and affection for the FBI? No, but you know who is the greater devil in this equation? The people who can muscle out of our community a 40% increase in their wages while the people who are suffering in the community can't get $15 an hour. <laughs> you better say that. Sorry, James. Rebecca, you got to come in here and tell some jokes, sis. They don't let me. They On the day that I'm wearing all black, they don't let me. <laughs> That's what it is. You know when, <laughs> excuse me, you know when black people put on all black. They lose their mind. The whole the ancestors, the spirit, everything come out. <laughs> oh, man. Like, oh, oh, man. Let me check my notes. I didn't he was in that brother today. <laughs> okay. Man. Man, let's shift gears. Let's bring in this brother. Uh, um, he's been patiently waiting, and I'm excited about uh, discussing this Facebook uh, issue with you. He is Ahmad Baba from Rant Media, um, a, a progressive independent media company that's also a technology company um he has been on our show before brother thank you so much for joining us how are you this morning hey i'm, I'm doing good um i can't come in with jokes though because facebook stuff you know i wish i'd come in to lighten the mood after you brought that fire but uh <laughs> you know how it is it is it, it is such <laughs> that it is um so, man, listen, um, you've been covering, I want to play this first clip. You've been covering extensively over there at Rant Media, um, mm -hmm. the Facebook whistleblower situation. Um, I want to play the first clip yeah. from her testimony, and then I want you to just help us to understand the significance of what is happening in this moment. Sure Mark holds a very unique role in uh, the tech industry in that he holds uh, over 55% of all the voting shares for Facebook. Um, there are no similarly powerful companies that are as uh, unilaterally controlled. Um, and in, in the end, the buck stops with Mark. There is no one currently holding Mark accountable but himself. Now, there's a whole lot more testimony, and we'll play it in a minute, but <laughs> you know all the nuances of it. Help the audience to understand what's going on and why it's important. So, obviously, she just outlined there, I mean, Zuck is the center of all of this. He's the one that's made every decision. Yeah. He's the one that set the motto, move fast and break things. Little did he know he was going to go on and break societies across the world and children's mental health and democracy and, and pretty much uh, almost everything that, that we touch in our lives. But um, essentially, what the gist of her overall testimony, why it's significant, is a lot of what she broached, we knew, right? I mean, we knew Facebook was allowing disinformation to proliferate. We knew that 
uh, this was really just running rampant and that they, that they weren't really doing much about it. But now she provided tens of thousands of documents that essentially confirmed that not only we knew this, but they knew. And mm. they had research that confirmed that children were being negatively affected by Instagram. They had, uh, it's like, it was 13% of girls who use Instagram were suicidal. Uh, they had their own research that showed they only uh, took action on three to five percent of hate speech while they were publicly wow. saying, oh, well, you know, we're making great strides. Right. So the, the big difference here is that we have someone from the inside who worked on their civic integrity team since 2019 coming out and saying this was wrong. I saw it from the inside. Mm. Mm. That's a lot, man. <laughs> That's a lot. Um I want to let's run. I want to run the second clip where she outlines a lot of what you just said. Um, and, and I need folks to understand we're talking about a nation bigger than China <laughs> with an economy that rivals some nations. Facebook is a behemoth and they have influence and not just Facebook. We got to make sure everybody understands it's, it's uh, Instagram, especially. Um, they understood, Mark Zuckerberg understood exactly what he was doing to American people. Let's take a listen into this next clip. When we realized big tobacco was hiding the harms it caused, the government took action. When we figured out cars were safer with seatbelts, the government took action. And when our government learned that opioids were taking lives, the government took action. Yeah, check that out. I implore you to do the same here. Today, Facebook shapes our perception of the world by choosing the information we see. Even those who don't use Facebook are impacted by the majority who do. A company with such frightening influence over so many people, over their deepest thoughts, feelings, and behavior, needs real oversight. Brother Baba, what are your thoughts? I mean, she's right. You know, I mean, Facebook has, you know, the, the biggest thing about this is that Zuck himself, right, he went in front of Congress and essentially... I don't want to say they lied, but he he gave information that was contradictory to his own research. He said that, you know, the mental health of, of children was not being affected. Right. That uh, they saw positive effects while they knew their internal research was, was showing X. And her big tobacco comparison is perfect. Right. Because she's essentially saying that this company knew it had widespread impact on the, the mental health. Uh, the democratic health, the overall, I mean, now essentially with the anti-vaccine stuff, the, 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 the literal physical health of our, our nation. And they just continued to, to do their same practices. And that's what big tobacco did. That's what big oil did. That's what big pharma recently with the opioid crisis did. And now big mm -hmm. tech seeing that similar reckoning. And she's right. They need to be regulated. And luckily there's some, I mean, although like for different reasons, obviously they want to regulate Facebook. I mean, Republicans for, you know, uh, for a lot of times, false reasons, but they're in agreement. So it could potentially happen. Mm. Mm. James, jump in there, man. Oh, no. Yeah, you said it all. Um, I've heard some hard stories as well, too. I, I have, uh, hmm. for the sake of protection, I know somebody that worked in there that has shared a few stories and, you know, Facebook, I've, I've heard a lot of horror stories from multiple people that have worked with Facebook and that were like in the inner sanctum part ways. And it's a lot. And, you know, they, they try to make it seem like everything is uh, diversity and inclusion and all of this. Mm. And it's really not a lot of mm. races, races, uh, stuff going on. It's a lot. It's a whole lot. Mm. I that's 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 exactly what I want to ask. Um, um, Ahmed, um, uh, why do people assume that technology is somehow inherently non-racist and non-biased or <laughs> unbiased? It's a good question. Um, I think because there's a mechanism, you know, there's not a thinking brain behind a lot of the technology, right? They'll think, okay, AI, you know, that's why Facebook always says, okay, AI will solve the hate speech, right? But we don't look, a lot of the times, there aren't diverse hands behind the keyboard coding that AI, right? Coding that machine learning, um, making sure the algorithms 
don't have those biases, right? If you don't have a diverse team of engineers, how are you going to be able to essentially code the, 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 um, the technology we're using to not have racial biases of the people who are coding it, right? So, like, there's a diversity within the company that's impacted. And I think um, a lot of people just don't necessarily uh, see, like, especially when it comes to machine learning, um, I think people are getting a crash course now. Like, the way uh, Frances Hagen, like, laid it out was real human, right? She talked about the, the effect. She didn't, like, go in and talk about, like, the, you know, she didn't use uh, programming language and didn't, like, try to lay it all out in a way that you right. couldn't understand, right? So she laid it out for us. We understand, the general public understood. One of the things I've heard from people just uh, uh, around that don't really pay attention to technology were like, hey, like, I understood. Like, I'm not an engineer, but I got what she was saying. So I think she's going to help to break that down. And then I think the next step is talking about, I'm glad you brought that up, because there should be like a real like uh, racial reckoning in there, right? Of, of the fact that there's not as many, when there aren't people of color in the engineering room, the technology itself can't really factor in these biases, right? Right, right. Mm. And then there's the there's the uh, other obvious elephant in the room, the, not just the racial uh, component of the algorithm. We got to talk about the the, the sexism, the, the 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 patriarchal part. This algorithm is uniquely designed for hate speech and hate sentiments. And, and the degradation of women. Um, and yeah. people are surprised, but why would they be surprised when the guy behind Facebook got to his whole start exploiting women? <laughs> this is true. I mean, face smash was a thing, <laughs> right? I mean, he did the thing that went on to destroy democracy was he was just trying to compare girls' faces in his dorm room, right? Originally, right? I mean, uh, we all know the story and like it's no surprise it'd go on to like be you you'd create when you don't create technology with the foundational principles of we're going to do this right we're going to do this safe we're going to put in these safeguards it will it will let loose we saw this with clubhouse uh that didn't learn mm. from facebook's mistakes right you can't you can't not learn from the past 10 years of social media and just drop a new app without taking these these factors into play because you're right like the algorithm we, we, there was one experiment that uh, Francis Hagen outlined where basically uh, a new user joined and all they did was like Donald Trump and Melania Trump's Facebook page. That was it. And then all of a sudden, within hours, they're getting fed QAnon groups and then they're getting fed like and then the next within days they are getting fed white genocide content. Like wow. you're making a leap there, algorithm. Wow. Like you, that's not you, that's not the fault of the user. The user like Melania Trump and Donald Trump. They didn't say. I want to join a white supremacist group. Like, <laughs> right. <laughs> so, James. <laughs> man, that's like, that's like one of us going to click on, you know, I don't know. I, I don't even have a good comparison, man. That's wild, bro. <laughs> <laughs> it's, you know, like people try and blame the user, right? But like, they're just simply liking stuff that they like. And then Facebook's like, oh, okay, you like Donald Trump. You must also like the KKK. Here, join no, this group. Yeah, there it is. Like, <laughs> there it is. I found it. Right. You like Donald Trump. <laughs> you must like Hitler. That's what it is. Yeah. Like, okay. You like you like Marjorie Taylor broken. Green. <laughs> you must like Ava Braun. You know what I mean? Come on, let's, let's, let's Exactly. Yeah. Those some those some but those those algorithms are not self written. They're written exactly. these, 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 these the mm. software, they're written by people. And right now we know very clearly. Listen, I worked for a tech company. Got my start at one. Fabulous. I, I, this, I, this is the only company I can vouch for. Really dope company. Shout out to HubSpot. Come on the show. But it was all white. It was all white folks at that company, man. Like every tech company right now is you're going to see an overabundance of white men. Is that because we don't have black coders? Is that because we don't have women coders? Or is it because, well, you know, Everybody hires their friends. Everybody hires somebody they know. They see a similarity. They see connected threads. They see their identity. They see themselves reflected in that person. And then when they see a black person or if they see a woman and God forbid they see a black woman, then hmm. that comfortability is, is threatened. So, I mean, maybe maybe diversity and inclusion is, is not enough. Yeah, I mean, that, that's a good that's a good point. Right. Because, as you know, obviously, he's an entrepreneur, too. And. You know, I'm out in New York now and I'm going to these, you know, tech spaces. And luckily there are people trying to do these diversity inclusion uh, events and things of that nature. But, you know, there's no shortage of talent. The talent is out here. 
there are black yeah. uh, and black women, especially engineers. There are people there are brilliant people in product that are just waiting to be hired. But like you said, the same thing with, you know, one of the things you hear from founders or entrepreneurs even is like, OK, get a warm intro to that VC. Right. It's like, OK, I don't know any. Right. At first. Right. At first, you don't know any. Right. Or they say, go raise a fan- friends and family round. Right. Of funding. It's like, oh, well, my friends and family don't own head fund, hedge funds. So that's difficult. Right. So it's like there's all these biases built in to, to this thing where it's like it really is kind of a referral basis of, uh, of, you know, recruit your friends. And if you don't have many black female friends or black friends, you're going to just recruit more people that look like you. Right. So I <laughs> think luckily there's a paradigm shift going on and more people are kind of just creating their own things and more people are kind of just, you know, a lot of VC firms, a lot of new black entrepreneurs raising money. Um, a lot of people who made it are, are giving back and like, and not giving back, they're making investments. These are, these are actual investments in people. Um, and hopefully this paradigm shifts because the talent yeah. is out here. It's just, yeah. you, you're right, man. There's no shortage. It's just the fact that the people who are in there right now look a certain way. And a lot of, obviously some of them are, are, are great. And a lot of them are, you know, do, do um, try to give back, but we do need more representation in the room to make these decisions. Hey, brother, um, I don't know what kind of time you got. We're getting ready to kick it over to the after party. And Rebecca Zor is going to be joining us. Um, and, and I want to tell the audience um, about my time in the tech industry going to the very first diversity and inclusion meeting that the company ever had. And, and I'm sitting there thinking everything is fine. And I'm just starting They start talking about all the things that are happening in society, Trayvon Martin, all those things. And I'm just sitting there and, and having flashbacks of radicalism. I'm like, no, don't wake up this demon in me. Um, I want to tell you all about that. Patreon.com forward slash like it or not. Uh, brother, tell everyone how they can get up with you, particularly your article that you wrote about this over at Rant Media. Yeah, so um, uh, you can essentially follow Rant Media at Rant with two T's on Twitter and all social media. Follow me at uh, Ahmed Baba um, underscore. And also, um, I wrote that article for The Independent, um, dropped it yesterday. Uh, it's on my Twitter feed. Uh, the headline's right there on the Chiron, why Facebook should be worried. I think regulators are coming for them. Hopefully they yeah. do something. But yeah, come come find me on uh, social media, on my IG too, all the stuff's in my link tree on, on, on Twitter. So let's connect. That's what's up. Ahmed, Baba, thank you so much for joining us. DJ Exclusive, yes, take us over to the after party. Rebecca Zor is joining us. We'll see you right after this. Ahmed, thank you so much for joining us this morning, man. Make sure that y'all go follow Ahmed, Baba, underscore on Twitter, and Rant with two T's on Twitter as well. As well. Make sure you go follow, like the so we'll see everything. Okay. And again, thank y'all so much for joining us this morning. If you have not already, it's true. Yeah, I'm like, what day even at? <laughs> y'all, welcome back to the screen. Benjamin Dixon and introducing, finally, <laughs> Rebecca Azor with some sh- internet issues, child. I understand. Because at one really. point, let's talk. It's- yeah. Oh, I'm about to say at one point we didn't think Ben was gonna stay connected because he's dropped a couple of times today. <laughs> yeah, like when you live in those areas, I still don't have power right now, so I'm only using the Wow. Line. So that's why it's not lit behind me. Oh, you straight uh, up don't have power right now. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. So that's what I told you. I was trying the Mi Fi in the car. So I have a, a oh. I found the Mi Fi. So um I was charging it in the car to give us some kind of you know, like, you I don't know, wasted an outfit. Hey, listen, no, wait a minute now. I'm I am thoroughly impressed. I have to me say, too. I, I didn't know your say, power was off. That's commitment <laughs> right there. I yeah, say, I tip my hat off to you, sis, because not only are you here with your power off, uh, but you got the good stuff. You got the camera going. You got the good light and still going. You still got that thing popping. Look at you. Because I charged everything, and <laughs> I usually Rebecca low key said. So. Uh, Rebecca Lowe. Oh, David, we don't want to hear from you, David, because I'm mad at you. I've been talking to you like for the past 10 goddamn minutes, and David been straight up ignoring the hell out of me. Go to hell, David. I love you, I mean. Because because, because, uh, you weren't in my ear. That's Dwayne's fault. But I'll shut up. I'm the white guy. What were you saying, David? What were you about to say? You know what, Bubba? Hold on. Matter of fact, Bubba, David, I got you on that. Because the whole time that he was saying that, I didn't realize that you weren't hearing him because I was talking to Rebecca. So, Bubba, that's my fault. Yeah. Oh, well, you know thank what? Thank you for apologizing. 
They, yeah, Dwayne, nah, blame, blame, blame the white man. Let me stop. No, no, it's, no, it's no. It's a story of my life. Let's blame the white man. No, get off of David. Even my family. No, my what family you guys are going to so do okay. is get off of David. I don't know what you guys have been doing in the first half of the show while I was doing six jobs trying to get on this show, but we will not. Girl, whatever. When Ben went out and got his, uh, his, his, his Wi-Fi hotspot device because he was having internet problems, Rebecca was like, I'm already ready. I'm already prepared. Yeah. <laughs> yes, I'm already ready. Well, actually, I never went and bought it. I never Thank went and you, bought David, it. Thank you, David, for uh, being on my side while all these big men are. You want to hear the true story? <laughs> Speaking of, uh, true story in my wait, last week. Wait. Wait. Go ahead. Do y'all Go ahead, see David. the bottom of the shot run down there? After party, whatever, 17, 2021. <laughs> Oh, good. <laughs> uh, <Dwayne. laughs> Why? After party? <laughs> Why? 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 Not whatever. No, whatever. Not whatever. <laughs> this is the best. This is the best show, low key. Like, like, like hi. What we do right here, this is the real show. All that other yeah, stuff. Yeah, for real. We really just do that to get you all it's warmed not the up. Fifth. To get you here, because this is where we actually have fun. Rebecca. <laughs> Thank you, Dwayne. Look, Dwayne is doing it in real time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I, I literally watched it just move. <laughs> Did you? Anyways, you guys, it. I am here. How are you guys doing? How how was the show? I missed the really handsome um, uh, guy that you guys had on, Ahmed Baba, um, who was just on recently. Fine as ever. <laughs> Girl, I, and you I, know, being I, being as me trying to invite people, like, hey, what you doing after? You, you got time to stick around for the after party? Every time. And I'm like, I ben, every time. Ben always does that. Hey, Leave people listen, alone. You can't say I don't Let be looking out. Go. You can't. You you cannot say that I don't be looking out. <laughs> no, Ben, you gotta. It, it's cool. I I will see them somewhere else. Like you know, we'll see them again on the show. It's great. It's fine. It's good to see people who are knowledgeable, well spoken, smart, and handsome. You know, but you know, Ben, it's not for us to get together James, we're, all, we're, hey, James, we're all the other we're we're all the above minus the last part but go ahead Rebecca. Um, right. oh, no, you guys are you guys are you guys are but um you know you guys I mean, are my you brothers you see his jawline i was like all right brother we see you okay was, Damn, man, you saw them lips. Just, his whole face is it's just nice <laughs> he has a nice face he has a nice face but, <laughs> this is the real show I'm telling this you, is this, the is the real, this is the real show. All that when Rebecca show, gets on, I know, I know, I know. I didn't say that. <laughs> just I said say the after party. Just say it. Just say it. Um, <laughs> when I get on. But um, here's my um, story for you all today. So <sighs> I woke up and then, you know, I was like, okay, let me get myself together because I've been having a hard time, like, with sleep. And it could be because I'm working late or working long. Or my iron is low, so usually I have mm. to go dig through the 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 damn. I hate the iron pills, but I have to dig through my um, you know where you put all the the in the cupboard the all the pills that you have and yeah, stuff, yeah. your vitamins. So I have to dig through that. The, the, the I have to cabinet. find those, and I have to the take them in the form. <laughs> in a <laughs> drug cabinet, and I have to, but I have no, mine in no, the kitchen. No, we said the junk cabinet. <laughs> oh, oh no, I don't have a junk cabinet. I have oh. to make sure because my mama is a little hoardy with that, so I don't. Okay. I have to make sure okay. I don't do that. <laughs> okay. I don't. I don't have a. Junk oh, you know what? I got it backwards. It's it's the junk drawer. I bet you got it's the junk drawer, drawer yes. in the drug that, cabinet. Yeah, that I go. do have a okay, a, a junk drawer. It has just <laughs> random things in there that don't need randomness. To be in there. You can find. Let me tell you what you can find in there. Soy sauce find, packets. Yeah, yeah. You can find all the packets. You can find a journal entry in there. Why? I don't know. Some uh, gorilla you can glue. Find my moving, my moving papers. You can find um, the the for outside. I have um, drapes outside on my my balcony. You can find the little hooks in there. You can find yeah. condoms in there. You can find Damn. like... Wait, 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 wait. You can find wait, little salt packets you from what? No, I don't know where no. the salt packets are. But Mail, that's in bills there. in there. <laughs> Whole bills. bills. Right. Like, well, damn. A, what these bills like five hey, years hey. ago? There's money. I found money in there. Cash. <laughs> your disconnect notice is in there. <laughs> Because when you act surprised, when your lights went off, it was in your junk drawer. Yeah, no, my disconnect won't ever happen because my bills stay paid. Um, but when things like this happen, when the weather, oh, I don't, honey, know I don't you live a long that life anymore. Time, I do Rebecca. not live that life that I used to live. So I can be very proud of that. God, that I don't live where my bills aren't paid. I remember those days, though. Yeah. I do. But now, when my Yesterday. bills are paid, do I have money left over? Huh. 
Hell no. <laughs> that, that, I'm trying to move out of that. I'm trying to move out of that stage. You mean like where, after I got the bills paying all the other, do, I, do we have money left over? There was not a dollar. The there was not a dollar left, Teddy. There was not a dollar left. So I'm at that Not stage a damn penny. <laughs> Bless I used to be, be at the, the stage Lord. where I used to be at the stage where you can't pay your bills. Um, and then like you'll be like, well, since I'm I can't even pay my bills, I know my light's gonna be off on the 30th. I might as well give me something to eat. All I got is ten dollars. Right. I used That's to be right. in that family, and God right. has graduated yeah. me at least. No, don't I can that. pay the bills and be don't broke that. after. Don't, yeah, don't, Amen. Don't, don't, that, I feel you on that. For mm. real. Enjoy yeah. yourself. Mm. That's dead ass. It, and it took for me to go through some shit like all like the past two years. To be like, damn. Like I was having a talk one to him. Like, bro, we was broke as as hell. Like a couple of years ago. Like broke, broke, bro. Like. I ain't even say check the check because that check came and went so fast. It's just like, damn, I don't know what how, how I'm going to eat. I guess I'm going to yes. go to mom and dad's house. Actually, I was staying with mom and daddy, so I'm like, I ain't got no choice. Talk guess we're going to eat over here with food. I, oh, can't, I ain't got no money. Can't do nothing else. Man, but now, man, thank you, Lord. James, Universe, James, I'm here. <laughs> let me tell you, I saw my car get dragged out from the front, y'all. No, I didn't see it get dragged out. <clears throat> it was a cold Thanksgiving so I saw day. I get... <laughs> <laughs> it was a cold Thanksgiving day a few years ago. My car, I woke up in the morning and I opened the door. Y'all, this is what I did. I opened the door and then I closed it. And then I opened the door again and I just went to go sit down. <laughs> I went wait, to go sit wait, down. Wait, what was happening? Your car was being repossessed? My car was not there anymore. My car yeah. was no longer there. Um, and then my, uh, and this was Thanksgiving day. I was leaving to go at oh, least. Oh, on Thanksgiving day? Mm -hmm. I was leaving the house mm. to go get Thanksgiving food so that I can spend it with my sister, you know, at the time I was staying with her. And this is mm. a few years ago. And I just literally just looked outside and I had no car. And then I couldn't, mm. my sister ended up, um, <laughs> we just had to make do what we had because then her car was acting up. Mm. Um, and then well, she had a little attitude. Still bald. Look, and then she Dang had a little man. attitude. And then she had a little attitude. They get you, get your camera together, but but she had a little. I know because I got to tell you my repo story. <laughs> and then and, and then, then I'm gonna tell y'all mine. <laughs> yeah, and then after that, I just sat there like, dang, I have no car. And at the time, I had just removed myself from that um, that second company that we were working with at the time, Ben. And I oh, had wow. yes, I had no money to my name. I had no car, and I did not have my own place to stay and it was such a hard time because I couldn't spend Thanksgiving or whatever and it was a hard time looking for work after it was such a hard time looking for work after that I don't even know how y'all I don't even know how I was paying for anything like anything but I didn't I, that, that's why I say I graduated from that time where I wasn't able to pay my bills and I'm able to pay my bills now even though it's not the best that when I get the money it goes literally straight every dollar goes straight to the bills that's right. it's it's sad that I have that's to be right. thankful for that because we've come so far from living we weren't even even able to live paycheck to paycheck it, that didn't even work but now I'm living paycheck to pay, paycheck and I'm grateful for that I want to move on from yeah. that I want to graduate yeah. from paycheck to paycheck and move to the place where I can have money moved into my savings regularly and if there is a rainy day like my tire blew out remember i told you guys and i had to pay an extra god knows what or when i had that medical procedure and they just um billed me that extra money for like to pay it for no reason like stuff like that happens i will have it you see what i'm saying yeah. so You're right i think I'm, I'm i'm blessed and been favored to be here in this space james now. james james yeah. just before you tell your story i just i think a lot of people have to understand that there's like there's there's just so many different experiences there's some people who are listening who have no idea what you're talking about they've never yeah. ever, ever 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 experienced living on the edge of of complete and abject poverty like shape like so anyway um james go ahead you were about to say oh man so <laughs> when i was supposed to graduate from college in florida because you know i went back went through the program at cookman and they were like you come back get your degree i'm like boom i'm walking across this stage it's gonna be the this is it for me i finally got here and i finally able to do it so my friend we were sharing a car and everything and so 
<laughs> cute. No, no, y'all heard. Is the friend in the background? Is that fr- is, is that hey friend? Is friend. That yes. right <laughs> they talking about, hey, friend. friend. <laughs> hey, friend. Cheers, my man. Hey. So, hey. Now, Q and now I, the story, the the story that got much more interesting. Let's go. <laughs> See, look at y'all petty as hell. So, Q and I were, were sharing the car and everything. And so, uh, his ass got in trouble, got the insurance taken out the car because he got stopped at a light and didn't have no registration. So he had to park the car. Cars parked for a long time. Now I understand these black problems, they're real black problems. Okay. Yeah. So finally, when we got the registration set it on the car, we got the uh what was the registration, we got insurance on the car, everything was good. So once we got everything caught up, I was supposed we were supposed to leave at six o'clock that next morning to go to Florida so I was able to graduate. At 5 30 a.m. looked out the window, I just see a red light coming down the driveway. And I'm like, what's that? Mm-hmm. Open up the window, tow truck. Ain't no window back, no beeping sound, nothing. Mm-hmm. Pull right in, less than five minutes, bruh. Pull the hell out. Thankfully, the buddy let us get the, all, all the stuff out the car, but pull right on out. I'm just like, yo. And because of that, he couldn't. He couldn't even come to my graduation. I had uh-huh. to catch the bus down. Thankfully, my mom and my dad they were already there, so we were gonna meet them there and all, everybody go to the graduation. But mm-hmm. had to ride Greyhound down and had to get in the car with them. And, and at that time, we still had my niece, so there was no room for Q at all in the car. So here it is. It's just my mom, my dad, my sister, and my niece at the graduation. So I might, still made the best of it, but man, one of the worst feelings in the world. I'm so mm. like that makes me want to just damn, oof. Damn. that's sad. And uh, but I'm happy that we are at a different place. Ben, your repo story. Man. I know it's about your Audi. Talk Is it about me. your Audi? <laughs> <laughs> no, it's not about the Audi. <laughs> it's about the Nissan. <laughs> oh, the Nissan recently. <laughs> okay. <laughs> oh. <laughs> <laughs> See, I'm not bad. This, is, this, is, this isn't just the after party anymore. <laughs> oh, sorry. <laughs> oh, I thought it was, we still waiting. <laughs> Man, look. Let's just say let's 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 adjust for time. Let's let's adjust for the time variable. We don't know how recently this was. Recent could be. Yeah, you know, recent could be a year ago, ago. Or two years ago. Yeah. Right. But James. They pull up on you nowadays in the middle of the day and be like, hey, homie, I'm coming to get your car. You want to just give me the key? <laughs> and I'm Bruh, like, you know they what? Don't even... I was oh, like, go ahead, Ben. Go ahead. I was like, I was like, show me your paperwork, man. He was like, I called the people. I said, man, get, take this key. Go do the thing. He came back. I said, just make sure you come in the cover at night because <laughs> I don't need my neighbors knowing <laughs> exactly what's going on. Dang, you were able to it, talk to them? Just, they was look, looking for me. They was look, looking for look. my mind. <laughs> yeah, no, sometimes now they'll they'll come, like Ben said, because a lot of people, if if well, I know the way they used to do it, it could mess up your car, them towing, them them towing yeah. your car like yeah. that. Yeah. So like yeah. oh, you got repo them, too? You have a repo year, story too? Years, years and years. Oh, years ago. and years and years ago. Yeah, this was this Dwayne said I'll be out in these though. streets working, bro. I ain't, I ain't got nothing to do with that <laughs> shit. <laughs> this ain't recent, baby. They said I ain't broke no, like y'all. I, 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 I bet no, y'all I know who has it. I've been married six years and and uh when since in those six six years I, I used to be, you know, bad with money and all that. But you know, that's why you get somebody to help to to that that's yeah. Kind of Shout out to the women and all the balance. So yeah. the men too. Years, the years ago, <laughs> <you> know, <laughs> my fault, my fault, my fault, my fault. But but uh, right? yeah, man. Shame on me. So some people sometimes they'll they'll ask you like, hey, look, we we can take this whenever we want to, but you want to save yourself and just hand over the keys. So <laughs> yeah, I was like, let me t- okay, like, let me tell you how it is now because just like men have another story. <laughs> You know, last wait, year, wait, a couple of years you, ago, just means time is relative. You know, go ahead, Ben, go ahead. <laughs> no, no, no. I just want to dovetail the conversation. Only thing I got out of my whole car, man, I ain't care about nothing else that was in the car. I got my political science book out, and I said, take it, bro. So anyway, um, I wasn't able to take a thing. They got all of my, like, I had just remember because I told you guys I was at that stage of, you know what, life is just life sucks, and I'm just gonna. 
I'm That's just going to keep <laughs> just keep shopping, right? <laughs> shopping. I was shopping at the thrift store. I had went to the thrift store and I bought like so much clothes and I threw it in my trunk. I was trying to toss it to you, James. They took it. Oh, sorry. <laughs> no, Rebecca, finish. Because <laughs> <laughs> it, it ties into what I'm saying. <laughs> I haven't been. I, I haven't. Oh, no light. I haven't been on the show since this morning and Ben doesn't want me to talk. There we go. I'm going to talk. There you light up. So, yeah, it's, yeah. it's going to come. The light's going to come. But um, I um, I literally lost all of those clothes that I bought, the shoes that I bought. Um, and I know that sounds petty, but I thrifted wow. all of that stuff and I wanted to utilize it to go to job interviews. And I they yeah. took it all and I was Damn. so upset. They took it all with the, with the car. They took it all with the car. And I couldn't get so to the thing because it was all the way in Forest Park. That's oh, oh ooh. So I got the inside scoop on one of these people. Was your stuff um, still from in there when you got your car back? You said what? Was your stuff get still the in there back. when you got your car back? Oh, sweetie, I never got the car back. You got the car oh, back. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> and you oh, ain't oh, never oh, go to the impound. Oh, see, see, I didn't, see, I didn't see. get the car back. I was right, poor. So, so, like, I was poor, poor. All right, I got car you. Back. I got you. So, so when I was in my poor stage. You know, I, I was I was able to scrounge up a little money and pay them and be like, hey, bring my bring my shit back. But but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah, I got the inside scoop from one of them because I saw them pulling up to get my car and they weren't even even in the complex to get my car. What I found out is <laughs> is that basically they drive around. They go to different apartment complexes because basically they have they a know. tag scanner now. Once they scan that tag, that's why I ba- always back the car in. I don't care if it's not under repo or not, I'm going to back this car in. But basically that tag scanner reads it and what happens when it comes up on their screen, they're not even looking for your car. Once it comes up on that screen, they say, oh, this under repo, let me go ahead and get this because that's five hundred dollars they make per car doing that. So what they wow. do, they go to apartment complexes, they go to parking lots of Nikea, <laughs> to the mall, don't matter <laughs> where it is. <laughs> Wait, 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 can y'all at least let the people get home? Can the people get home, man? Right at our kid, you think somebody stole your car? No, they took this. <laughs> and it's a very, you know what's funny? It's a very competitive uh, um, they have reality TV shows about them. Yeah, it, yeah. They will, and they will argue with you about it, they'll fight you on it. And, and some of them won't. Some of them will continue to do their job. And and, yeah. and and move forward, but at the same time, it, what is it? To, our whole, all of our stories, guys, lets us know that these people, America, thrives on this kind of thing. Let me have my mm-hmm. cards. B- just bill me. Put me already in the debt that I'm already in. I don't care. But to come and just take the car, um, and then let it sit somewhere for months to years, and then and then listen, guys. Those people are still. This is almost seven years ago. Those people are still trying to, um, as far as when I purchased the car, those people are still trying to send me documents saying, hey, just come on and get the car back. No, first of all, I am now, Who's I car? bought my 2018 car with like maybe like 8,000 miles on it. And, um, you know, and it, it's, it, it, I bought it, what, maybe less than a year old. I don't have time for that anymore. I'm at a new place in my life. I'm at a new blessing right. in my life. I told you, it's not, I have to be like very grateful for where I am because child, that little car that those people at the um at the um dealership literally played me. I didn't have no any knowledge of how to get purchased a car. I just knew that I needed one. Oh, and the God. way that yeah. they oh, like uh had me on my APR mm. and What's had your this highest that, percentage. I, at, at that time that oh. they did me. Do you really want me to say it on air? I'm gonna say mine. Yeah, you know what? I'm gonna tell you all my business. I'm sitting here. I'm sitting here naked. They had me at 26 percent on a 2006 vehicle. We were in the year 2013, 14. Yeah. Hmm. Ben, what was yours, Ben? What's your highest, Ben? Now listen, I understand that 27% on credit cards because you know the way my credit score is set up. Um, I, I, but I've never seen that on a car. I was taken aback when I paid nineteen uh, percent for that. Nineteen man, y'all ain't that ain't shit. Twenty nine percent on any vehicle that I've ever had when I've gone to get one. That's why I don't I don't care about credit. I hate freaking credit, dude. It's a freaking a freaking construct Pacific? to destroy my life. Yes. F credit, bro. I'm so freaking like pissed off about that. That's always one of the things I talk about because here it is, y'all base my life off of my credit, off a damn number, and I'm more than that. 
if I have money to pay for something, then I should be able to pay for it regardless and not have no high ass interest rates. You're trying to, I'm paying $13,000 for a car. By the time I finish paying for it, bitch, I'm paying for a house. What the hell? <laughs> no, it's true. I, I, on a car that was worth, and I Googled the car, on a car that was worth, Three thousand dollars, you guys, because I didn't have the three thousand at the time, but I really needed a car. Uh, I think my lights are coming on. But um, on a car that was um, uh, was Worth. three thousand dollars, I went and I, I looked. I didn't know, guys. I didn't know. I just needed the car. And the man was like, we can get you in this car. Yeah, I brought that car and I looked at the paperwork after I started actually learning how to budget. Y'all, I looked at the paperwork. I grabbed it out of the um, glove department and I looked at the numbers and it said I was going to end up paying twenty seven thousand for that vehicle. That's right. Then I added then I but then I like added all the other numbers and stuff and it ended up being like forty something thousand dollars I was going oh. to pay when mm. I got to the end for that oh. vehicle. We're talking about a two thousand six. Maybe it was a two thousand eight. It was one of those two years of um, a, a Mazda three. Ben, you remember my little red? I, that's what point? I said. I said little red. Remember, I said earlier. I said old red. Yeah. yeah that, wow. they, remember when the side was the? They tried apart? to get you for twenty seven thousand dollars for that car. Yes, and it was three, and it was worth three thousand mm. dollars. And y'all just just reading the chat, everybody is 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 saying the same thing. These high ass interest rates, twenty four point nine percent, uh sixteen percent, twenty four percent, and everybody is it's the same thing, even with the repo and stuff. So it it's just everybody has these stories and it and it's so crazy. Yeah. But on the uh um um <laughs> it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. Because <laughs> because there's a class of Americans who have so much money right now that they're 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 exchanging oh, and trading exactly. non fungible tokens, <laughs> and they're spending millions of dollars on gifts, gifs, and 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 memes because they don't know what to do with their money. And the rest hmm. of us are out here like you know what I mean. And, and insult to injury, Rebecca, because I worked at the same place that you worked. So you paying twenty seven thousand dollars for a car that's worth three thousand dollars, pulling up to a job that paid you the least amount that they could get away with. <laughs> And then hmm. when the taxes get taken out, you ain't got nothing left. But yep. you paid your rent and you paid everything or you did whatever you could. And at the end of the day, there's an entire system that's just sitting there waiting to gobble us up and grind us <sighs> into a pulp. And we call that business in the United States of America. Mm -mm. It's sick. It's capitalistic. It it's <clears throat> greed. And they literally, not only do we call that business, um, we call that responsibility, right? Mm. And yeah. I don't like when they look at, I, I used to feel like I was so irresponsible. Y'all don't understand the way I've learned about the system and how I've learned how to budget and put my numbers together every single week that I know I'm going to get a check. And every single week that I know I'm going to be without a check, I know what I can spend on. I know what I have extra to spend on. Mm. I know which bills it's going to. I do that every single week. And then like my car buying, um, uh, um, my car buying experience this time around, I looked at what my APR would be. I calculated with my current income, subtracted what it would look like. Cause I didn't get, I didn't have my place yet. Um, what it would look like Girl, once I got my, my, my next place, what it would look like if I were to add that to it, I had to have, I've had to make, make, put some fluff in the numbers just in case something happened. Like what yeah. if I didn't stay with the, the um, corporation that I work for? What did I, what if I didn't have the side gig, if I needed to make some extra money to go sing or whatever, or, you know, those kind of things. What if I didn't host this event or whatever? What would that look like for me? Um, that's why I had to come all the way to the beautiful mountains in the Caucasus Mountains to go find a place. To live <laughs> because I said, I'm going to go find something really nice because I can't live nice out here. They're going to put me in a roach infested spot that's just right. because it's in Atlanta. Paying the and same amount. Tax me how much I'm paying now. I live in a new build, like a condo area, new build that I'm paying way less than what they're paying out there. But yes, this is why I live out here. I had to literally look like at the me. numbers. I had to look at the numbers. I had to do all of that. And for me, when I looked at the damn, um, the, the APR guys, I cried. I said, mm. Lord, they are offering me an APR this low. <laughs> Thank you, right. God. Let me hurry. Let me hurry up and jump on this and go get me my brand new little baby, my little Jeep renegade. 
latitude. What, what, Let me go pick her current? up. What is your current? I mean, you uh, you don't have to, but uh, did you say what your current aim for yours? Or you it is that? less than double digits. Okay. So. That's good. That's, That's real progress. good. Because uh, if, if I ever would try to get a car, mine is going, I don't think I'm going to ever go under 20% in anything. That's why I like even buying a house. I'm not even going to talk about that because I'll be on this thing for 30 more minutes. And I know uh, Dwayne got a hard out in a few. But even buying the house, bro, it's the same thing. And I went through that process of buying the house before when I was married. I don't even, I'd never go through that shit again. Never. Yeah. I'm, Sometimes I'm you good. don't ever, it's like, I live, I live the way that I'm living. I'm fine. Um, yeah. You know, and I, you know, but I know that it was, if it wasn't for me trying to get my credit together, you guys, I would not have gotten this place the car or anything when i was at the, my nothingness i literally what i did was just um this was probably not the best thing to do but i l went into the credit thing and i was like i'm gonna play the system too i went to go see how we can remove some of this stuff off of my credit and what it was was report stuff i didn't know which one which things were going to be reported off of there and it was a lot of yeah. my medical expenses and Lo and behold, since I moved, it. they took them off. So I was like, okay, like this is it. I do not, at this point, I have good credit at this particular minute. Let me jump on this opportunity right now to go get me a car and to go do what I need to do. That was two years ago. And I, I made sure, like, I was like, nah, like y'all not going to have me looking crazy mm. out here. Look, mm. my, right. my um apartment complex just texts that we have um, Chick-fil-A breakfast waiting for us. <laughs> Oh, you suck. Ah. Girl, you're moving uh, on. And, up. and Leslie <laughs> can't ask, so Bubba, you, you ever buy, well, you won't ever buy a house again? If I do buy a house again, it's going to be in cash or a check, then I'm going to write. Because right, I don't want to go through that cash, mortgage you business. You then, okay, it. I don't want to go through none of that stuff. You don't, you got to look through all my hey, bank hey, account hey, stuff. Hey, and then if somebody hey. even give me money to a gift, you need me to research all that stuff too? Mm -hmm. Nah, bro. Y'all get too personal. Good. Yeah, it, I'll yeah, buy. It's reach, your, reach your hands out <laughs> to the screen. Reach your hands out to the screen all over the internet, wherever you are. James, you're going to get that house in cash, mm -hmm. brother. Mm -hmm. Everybody mm -hmm. associated by next year. with this program about to. Yeah, we both gonna be by in next houses because I, I know that I'm 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 looking right now. We gonna have houses. That we ain't gonna have to sit in here and keep paying these folks three thousand dollars every guy. <laughs> like, just no, we don't have to do that anymore. We are going to move forward, and, and we're gonna be living in houses, paying mortgages. Okay, for like five hundred dollars. Because I'm sick and I'm tired. I'm sick and I'm tired, but I'm grateful. <laughs> I'm sick, I'm sad, but I'm grateful. I know that we're going to be moving. Like I said, we moved from that first level of the, the you know, the situation we've seen. We're here in this particular level right now. You Do you not think it's going to get better? It's just going to get better because I'm not living the it's way gonna that It's going to get I better and better. Exactly. Yeah. Thank you, Ben. Thank you, Ben. Hey, man. <laughs> hey, hey, yo, let's get out of here, man. Uh, no, I saw, I, yeah, no, we're good to go. Um, I just know one thing. Y'all... <laughs> Y'all bitches, just, just don't let black women call for the revolution. Because, man, Rebecca Azor, between you and what you Maybe we should. And Maybe we should. What Georgia, Georgia Ford said at the beginning of the show. My God, today, y'all better get us off this screen. This is as good a place as any to thank everyone associated <laughs> with this program. We'd like to thank our partners at ACT TV, where we encourage you to do more than watch. We want you to act. Thank you to Dwayne and David in the background. James Bubba Williams, always a pleasure. Thank you for coming in on your day off. And thank you for that person who sent you a chat. We'll see everybody tomorrow. And I won't be here tomorrow. I love you guys. I'm sorry I came late, but it is what it is. Girl! <laughs> you better be here tomorrow. Make sure that you have your face in the place on Friday. Hey! Have your face, your face in the place on Friday. Damn, I can't get it out. And we'll be here, y'all. We will see y'all in the morning. Make sure you find the front of the front of the See y'all then. Deuces, y'all. See y'all in the morning. Holla. Into my heart.